by Cinnamon Bridges On Air to Scotland, sponsored by Tweet Street Scotland Occupied, the home of the satirical saltire. I'm Cinnamon Bridges, aka Peter. And tonight, uh, well, the guest that we've got uh, for this episode is Scott Forbes, who is the author of this book, A Long Walk to Justice. Um, we'll be talking about the book and we'll be talking about um, Murder in a Small Town, which was, was on mainstream again just um, on Tuesday or a few days ago. So it should be fresh in everybody's memory. Um, but so without further ado, I'm going to bring uh, Scott in and a view and we'll just have a wee chat so uh, scott thanks very much for joining us um we're live now on youtube and uh, twitter or at least we should be uh, i'll check that when, when you start talking um i wanted to ask you thanks very much for giving me this book right but you, you wrote a wee message on in the inside here what was it and it says thank you and i i don't know what it says for for going a walk is that what it, is that what you've, you've aye. 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 I joined me on my walk eh? I, aye, think that's, aye. I think that's what we mean so uh, if you've not got the book you can get the book where's it available amazon it's on amazon Pierre. so aye. Aye, aye, it's on amazon right well uh how are you doing first of all i'm all right Pierre. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, so everything's good pal everything's good and good. Uh, no maybe on this case but everything's good hi everything's good Everyone's good personally. Well, that's, that's 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 good to hear. Um, right, well, we're going to get we'll get right in about it because murder in a small town was was aired again on Channel Five on Tuesday. There, um, so it should be fresh in people's minds. Uh, but and we're going to get all the latest developments in the case. We'll ask you ask you about that as well. But first of all, um, the first question I would like to ask ask you, uh, Scott, um, is. Kareen was 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 on it. Have you heard anything from Kareen uh, of late? What's the latest? Uh, listen, I, I, I speak to Kareen very, very seldom. But listen, recently, a couple about three months ago, and 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 she does all right. She's certainly not living in that place anyway. Yeah. Right. Right. She's got a wee flat, and then and she listen, it's uh, warming, and and that place was set on fire. There's. Um, a major fire in that building after she left, but listen, that was ages after. After Channel Five aired that program, um, Corinne was in a flat just, but just before that got aired. So the, the, what you see on Channel Five is just film just before she had got the flat. Does do that make sense? But she's doing all right. Ah, listen, as, as far as I know, and then the last time I spoke to her, ah, she's doing all right. She's doing all right. Oh. Hey, Scott, you still there? Hi. Hi, hi, hi. 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 Right. <laughs> so when you done the the, the, the murder in a, a small town, um, there was you were supposed to feature a lot more in that. Was that is that right? Ah, uh, definitely. My accent was too strong, Pierre. You you see the sub you see the subtitles in it. Right, aye. Well, I did notice that, and I, I remember you saying something about saying something like that to, uh, to listen, about it. Went, the, the producer Jen, she, she, she um, listen, she, she phoned me. Oh, Scott, I'm embarrassed. They want to use subtitles for your accent. I say, I'm not caring. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. Um, listen, uh, uh, Murder in a Small Town had, had a massive effect. Aye, aye, right? I agree with that. And uh, it's woke a lot of people up. Do you know what I took for? I watched it a couple of times now, Peter, right? And I watched it again on Tuesday night. First time I watched it, I got pretty emotional to see some of the stuff getting aired on a television like that, right? But uh, watching again now, what stood, stands, stands out for me? Is, is John Scott the QC, the KC? Uh -huh. John Scott's now Lord John Scott. Right? right. Now he's, so you've got a high court judge who has been prepared since 2005 to speak out about this case. In 2005, he spoke to Sam Poland for the BBC in the, the Devil's Honour, I think it was called, right? 
and then he may make that murder in a small town. And if, you, if anybody wants to go back to that program and look at High Court Judge, remember, you have to give this in mind. He's a High Court Judge, and he's sitting in his own television before he become a High Court Judge, obviously, right? Telling you that the statements of the, the, the search party or something of very interest to watch his face. These statements started off identical, right? Mm -hmm. And they were telling the truth, you know, this happened and that. But then every one of the statements changed exactly the same. And he said, oh, that would be of interest to me. And that has been very polite for a QC saying it. That's, a, that's a, the, a, one of the top legal people in Scotland telling, <laughs> telling Scotland that he didn't believe these statements were, were true. And then... Um, that's what sticks with me, that whole programme. Do, do you know, listen, there's a lot of things, you know, like number one suspect, number two suspect, and then it's good that they've been highlighted, right? But um, John Scott, Lord Scott, Lord John Scott, speaking like how he spoke is uh, what stands out to me in that programme. That's what grasp gets me more than anything for that programme. So, you've now got two High Court judges, Maggie Scott, Lady Maggie Scott, and... Uh, Lord John Scott, know that this case is wrong. Well, it's now becoming quite fashionable, this fight, Peter. I will. I've noticed that. I've noticed there's more and more people coming out. And ah, yeah. The, the, just recently, Professor Brian Wilson, David Wilson. Uh -huh. Do you know who I mean? Right. Is that the Your one that's in the beard, right? I've... Now, a few years ago, he, he didn't share the, the belief that Mitchell was innocent. Or it was a miscarriage of justice, and then just recently he came, came and says, uh, "Oh, he was very forthright, and he says that Mitchell should never have been charged, let alone put in prison." Ah, uh, was that the one that says it was an unsafe conviction? Ah, uh, no, he listen. He went much further, he, and, and 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 he went on to say uh, the colour of Jody was still at large. Aye. Now I'm not in, in agreement with everything that David, Professor David Wilson does or whatever he's a. Uh, Criminologist, he's an ex-prison um, governor. So obviously, me and him are going to see things differently because of their backgrounds and their educations and whatever. But for him to come and say that, you know, he's like he's your high-profile criminologist. Sandra, Doctor Lean, in this case, is your encyclopedia for knowledge. Eh? Right? But he, David Wilson, is your uh, celebrity criminologist, if you want, right? And for him to come out at this late in the fight, ah, it's certainly be attracting a, it's certainly becoming more fashionable, Peter. Absolutely. Sure, do you know what I mean? Well, I went to, um, there was a peaceful protest a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. in Glasgow. I, I went along. Um, no, that, it was when the, the football league started back, Scottish football league started back, and also you had the world uh, cycling. cycling championships on, in Glasgow that day, so... It was a bit of a task getting there. There wasn't much transport that you could get right to it. However, if you know Glasgow, you know you can park in certain places. I went along to it, and that was what I noticed. There was a lot more people than the last uh, the last one that I uh, went to, to again, raise awareness of it. Um, so the support is, is there. Uh, in my opinion, there's more and more people being alerted to this. See, see it, def Peter, definitely... Listen, definitely, we were talking just the other day about me, the media. Uh huh. Uh, and here's a wee breakthrough for you. I'm just private eye. Uh huh. Right, you're going to run a story in the next maybe week, 10 days, whatever, you know. Excellent. And then on, on Mitchell, right? I'm in talks with uh, uh, the, well, one of your top BBC um, crime presenters, right? Right now to, to run another show. Another documentary for BBC just on what's been happening, you know, with, with evidence being destroyed and stuff. So the, the, the media certainly come on side, Peter. Listen, do you remember if you go back to 2003, every single paper was he was a beast and this and that. And, and the Sun, people don't like the Sun newspaper for whatever reason, Paul, politics and that. Listen, if, for me, in this case, Mitchell, they, 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 they're brilliant. They, they've got a journalist called Doogie Walker, I name him every time because. He made front page. Front page of a tabloid is a, a huge story, you know, about destroying evidence, and nobody yep. else would touch this. Well, he did. So, a lot of people are critical to me, or oh, the sun, it's the sun. No, I'm not getting it if it's the sun or what. And then, even the Daily Record, the Daily Record can't help themselves because they've got, a, they, they set a narrative 
20 years ago, and they, and if the back did now, they're going to look terrible. They did soften their stance for a wee bit, Peter. Right? And they, and, and, and there's one in particular, no names tonight, and they just, she's got a personal agenda against it, and whatever, and they keep rubbish in the case. And they, but overall, the Sunday Express, the Mail on Sunday, the Sun, BBC, Channel 5, that's pretty impressive for, for media coverage and a favourable um, tone, if you like, do you know what I mean? Aye. So and that's, that's changing. That's, that's what you need. I mean, the mood is changing, Scott. If, we take, it back to, if we take it back to the, the, the time um, just after the, the, the murder, everything, and as it says in Murder in a Small Town, it was a media frenzy against a 14-year-old boy um, and we've spoke before, and, and you've told us how uh, it was forensically um, examined, the forensic examination. Again, without lawyers or, or a, an adult present, is that, is that right? Ah, uh, Peter, 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 I can't emphasise this enough. I always say, dear, listen, there's a lot of politics in this case. Because it's such high profile, there's a lot of hate on both sides. Eh? Aye. This team and that group and that group, this group hate that group and this group hate that group. And you fought it. I fought right. Take all, all the politics and everything your side, all this and your belief. Ask yourself a question. How is it possible, right, to have a stand-up fight? A fight, pulling hair, punching, kicking, and bludgeoning, and um, inflicting inju horrific injuries before death, like severe injuries, Defensive injuries and that, they, they, they bled all over you, right? Then mm -hmm. commit a murder stripper, carry, I think, 300 wounds all, all, all together and not have a trace, a forensic trace. That's impossible. And and then, then after you leave the murder scene, you then go home and you're, you're allegedly burning parkers and just real nonsense. But there isn't a forensic thread. Eh? So a boy of 14 who's no not forensically savvy, He's no criminal. He's not a, a. He's not got a father as a bank robber who's taught him DNA at a young age. He's a. He's a middle class wee lad. We, 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 we are albeit now um, a bit weird to a mother or whatever, and it's drew attention to him. But he wasn't his DNA savvy. So he's murdered his girlfriend. He's beat her. He's stripped her. He, he's inflicted horrific injuries. I had stand up fight a whole lot, and he's managed to get away and destroy every piece of evidence. And he wasn't washed. Now the reason I tell you that. See, about an hour after they found the body, Peter, they all took them back to a police station. Mm -hmm. Four people were there. That's the three people that John Lord Scott was speaking about statements were really terrible, right? Now, every one of them should have been stripped and, and gave a white suit. Anybody that knows anything to do with crime, serious crime, four people being near the body and found it, you know, you, you take their clothes, right? They never took their clothes. They let them all go home and go to different houses. We're driving them out now, Keith, for cups of tea, and they're covered in Jody's blood and hair and the weather. And they take Mitchell and they strip him and they give him the full works. Now, the photo, strip him naked, photograph him, take all his clothes and put a white suit on him. His hair, they take scrapings from under his nails and his hair. His hair is dirty, as is his nails. His wrists are dirty and his ankles are dirty. So he's never scrubbed up. Mm hmm. Well, how therefore how, how how did they get rid of all this magically DNA saliva here blood? That's just listen. And, and, so they never found they, they, they found nothing. Uh, me in itself, forget the rest of the case and how corrupt the police is. Just for a minute and just ask how how is that possible? How can how can you commit such a murder and have no forensic link whatsoever? I it, it, well, again, it sounds. It sounds impossible, right? And that's probably because, as all the experts have said, it would be impossible not to have. Um, I mean, there was there was blood on on the wall um, and the angle where Jody's body was. That uh, the experts were saying that it would be covered. That the, the, oh, the attacker, it. the killer, the murderer would be covered. Peter, some of the stuff for Alice, and she was on her knees facing the wall, and the, and and, and the, the spray for the the throat hit the wall. Oh, the, 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 the blood that's on the wall is not arterial spray. Not. Didn't he come for that after he saw so another one? Do you know arterial spray? Listen, have you ever seen a deep wound? It, it's, it flies, do you know? Right? Mm -hmm. Well, the blood that's on the wall is not arterial spray. 
It's like um, somebody's walked past me with the wound at that level. I've always believed it's a, as Jodie was carried to where she was found. That's my own, right? I mean, uh, there isn't any blood where Jodie was found. There isn't any signs of disturbance. Clothes are laid out perfectly. It's like somebody took her there and then and put, put her down and then sprayed the place with ammonia, a bleach-like substance. Now, that's all factual. Um, that, that was never investigated. Nobody ever found the pool of blood that Jodie had lost for... I think Bishop says four litres. I might be wrong, listen. Uh, but I think he says four litres, eh? four or five litres of blood. And there's many blood where Jody was found. Mm-hmm. So, all, all, all that aside, again, I just keep asking, how how can you commit such a crime? Listen, she's got defensive food. People don't like me. Listen, whatever you do in this case, you get criticised, right, for one side or the other. And, uh, you're not doing a good enough job if you if you tell people this and you're, you're being a bad person. If you didn't tell, just, so listen, I just say it. Jody had defensive injuries, one of them on her arm, right? Genuinely, Peter nearly cuts her arm off, and, and, and she's done that. Somebody's obviously swinging at her, and, uh, and I've, we've spoke before about a missing knife, mm-hmm. right? And uh, the daily record, the hard facts that commit, committed uh, convicted Mitchell, and one of them's a missing knife, Peter, right? I went and bought, I'm looking at my desk to see how I've got so, it's a joke. Listen, the, the, the injuries inflicted on John G. Jones could not have been done with his knife. But the Daily Record printed a story about um, hard facts. Oh, he's missing knife. It's a wee, it's a wee, it is a lot back. At first, I thought it was a pen knife. It's a lot back, but it, it, it's got a blade that's the size of my finger. Ah, oh, that's right. Some of Jody's injuries, they'd say that the blade had to be 200 millimetres. That's eight inches. Mm-hmm. Think of that. Right. Now, the reason we know that is, and, and I didn't want to be too graphic here, but some of the wounds went in, in, in their mouth, eh? and, and they needed to come out the back of the neck. Right, so they were they were nearly piercing the skin at the back of the neck, so therefore they could measure the length. Do you know the blade, right? Uh-huh. And it was eight, eight inches conversion. That is time that's two hundred millimeters. I think is that right? Uh, Twenty five millimeters to an inch. Mm-hmm. So four, uh, eight inch blade, right? And they've, and they've got a 50, 50 millimetre blade where you lock back the missing knife, like it went missing when the police were searching it, implying this this could be the murder weapon. Listen, no, this, I, I showed an expert one time, a knife expert, you know what he says, did he stop and sharpen the knife again? He was laughing at, he was laughing at the, 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 me actually suggesting that this could have been the knife, inflict, but nevertheless, it's in the daily record, is a missing knife. And there, there, there was a missing knife, Peter. We yeah. found a, a, an eight-inch knife, an eight-inch blade, covered in blood where the tip broke. In a skip, frequented, a garage frequented with, in this case, three suspects, right? Mm-hmm. And then the police took it with white suits. Now, do you know how corrupt this case is? The man who first came and told me this, um, very articulate, politically minded, um, and an honest man, a car mechanic at one time, and now he does something else for a living. I meet him. I wanted to write about my book, but I couldn't get corroboration because there were three or four people found this knife. Now, the police went to me, 14-year-old boy at the time, that found this knife, and they picked him up for school without any parents, and they drove him home. And then the conversation, they tell him, I didn't worry about that knife that you found, son. It was just a cheap handled thing. A yellow handled knife, a cheap thing. A car mechanic took a window out and broke, broke it, so they just threw it away in the skip. And the boy got dealt to just forget about it, right? But I've got another man telling me that's not true, Scott. We found this large bowie knife, blah, 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 covered in blood. Then just after I write my book, I got a phone call for a, a retired detective who's been pretty supportive in this case. I, I've got another witness to the knife. And uh, the man went on tape and told me they found they, he found the bowie knife, a large, large bowie knife um, in the skip covered in blood. It was hidden for the defence, right? And then once uh, we, we, we got wind of this knife, uh, it got destroyed. Just destroyed. They just took away and burnt it or bucketed it or whatever. But the, the, the thing that raised the question is there were swabs taken from this knife. And we've got the production list number, so we know it existed. And we can't get a picture of it, but we know swabs were taken and we know what number of production. But that was never put in a court. I was never shown to a court. Um, and I've never read any defence papers where a large bowie knife... A number one sus- suspect in this case is uh, J- Jody's brother. Mm-hmm. Right? Everybody re- re- reads this case. 
People say you shouldn't name him and that. All the nonsense, yeah. Tell everybody. Um, he's number one suspect. Anybody who reads this case that's that, that's educated or experienced, you don't have to be universally educated, but somebody with experience in crime and a, a, a reasonable level of intelligence reads this case. You, you have to look at this and think, oh, oh it, it stands out for a crowd. And then, but then there's two or three others that you could easily, much easily, build the circumstantial case against them much easier than you could against Luke. Right? Aye. I was sitting in Glasgow, your lovely city, um, a couple of weeks ago, and, and a senior detective, a man that's been helped throughout this case, right? Um, he says, speaking to a BBC presenter, uh, roughly word, word for word, their uh, there's two or three people in this case that I could easily build a circumstantial case much easier than I could have against Luke. I can't, Jody's brother, he says, I can't say, he says he's number one suspect, but I can't say for a fact he did it. But what I can say is a fact, I say, what's that? Luke Mitchell did not kill Jody. <laughs> now, that's, I thought that to me, sitting listening to him, summed the whole thing up. Right now, it's hard to prove who killed Jody, although I've got strong feelings of Jody's brother. I'm, I'm saying that and I'm not really caring what anybody else thinks. That's my opinion based on what I've read over the years, right? And um, and I, I don't think that uh, unless a confession came from Luke Mitchell, they, they, then I think that's that's the the, the opinion I'll always keep. Mm -hmm. I can't ever see Luke Mitchell confessing to this crime because Luke Mitchell didn't commit this crime. So that's my opinion, and I have to state that it's only my opinion, you know. And because uh, you alluded to that in your book, Scott, that <clears> there was me there was more than one potential suspect. I would like to ask you about. Because uh, this was covered in Murder in a Small, small Town uh, also, mm -hmm. about Mark Kane who came to visit you. Um, was it was it Mark Kane that came to visit you and he'd scratching his... his, his ah, listen, see, see, Mark Kane, Peter, uh, listen, I, I give Mark quite a, a, a thought now and then because of this. Listen, I quite like Mark Kane. And then anybody who knew me, to, to tell you that. I, I, I like Mark Kane, I didn't dislike this lad. In the morning after Jody's murder, he was people were in his circle all thought he had killed Jody. Right. Listen, his best pals at college were saying, hey, "Oh, it's like he's he's making us want to believe it was him." And uh, he's coming to my flat next game morning, and genuinely, the deep scratches. I'm a fool. I know what a scratch in our faces. Do you know? Oh. And uh, I ask him, "Where did you get the scratch marks?" He had sunglasses on at first night, right? and a girlfriend Jamie tells him to take his sunglasses off. Takes his sunglasses off in there. I say, where did you get the scratches, Mark? Ah, what's wrong? I said, there's a wee girl being killed up. And new battle, eh, I, I heard about that. And I says, where were you? Oh, we, we were all in the woods. Now, listen, this lad used to go in the, wood, in the woods and meet other guys and drink strong lager and talk about their kilt. And he was like, he was weird. Not, listen, but he was a very bright boy, brilliant, by the way, a what a brilliant um, guitarist and music, very clever. And, right? and I says to him, and he, he couldn't explain the scratches. And I said, Mark, listen, that's not making sense to me. Oh, I fell in a bush, you fell in a bush. And, they, and I said, nah, I'm not sitting right with this. He left my house. And the next again, day, I went to New Battle Abbey and I, and I drove him to the police station. He was by the way, only two or three hundred yards up the road. It's not like he lived on the other side of Edinburgh. And then and he went in the police station and the police took notes, Mark Kane, to be traced and questioned. And they never done it, Peter. Mm -hmm. They waited till after Luke Mitchell was convicted. And then they... Then they only questioned him because I shouted louder. How, how come he never was spoken to? And then then, 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 they, then they just started telling lies about me and attacking me. And, and, they, and then, you know, one of, one of the big lies they told him, and listen, this is how bad this case is. This is just the tip of the iceberg, but this gives you a wee insight. When I took Mark in the police, I, I tell the police, listen, in 2005, after, after I take him in the police, they come in 2005, after the court case, December, or early 2006, I can't remember. They come and see me, but it's after Mitchell's trials me, right? Mm -hmm. I gave an affidavit to a solicitor, a solicitor advocate, Robbie Burnett, I gave, I gave a, a, an affidavit, and then they, put, they come and visit me well after Mitchell's been convicted. And I've taken a statement about Mark Kane, and I says, and do you know the worst? He wrote essays about killing a woman in the woods, and they're looking at me like, what? I said, no, seriously. He, 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 he's told, told me Mark Kane knows how bad it looks for him. And then, 
And he says, what makes matter worse, Scott? Is that I've written essays? What do you mean you've written essays? And he says, well, I wrote an essay about calling a room in the woods. And, and the tutor thought it was that good that she asked me for a follow-up. So he wrote mm -hmm. another one. So when I tell them this, and they, they go into the appeal court, and they say, nah, Mark Cain isn't, there, so, <laughs> isn't, isn't he a, a suspect? He's in the area, he's fully drunk, all that, he was scratching his face. Never question, I've never ruled him out. And they, they, they allegedly had him in a, a, an off license about ten, half past ten at night. I'll be up the other end of Dalkeith. Six hours after the murder, and somehow, somehow the deal they could tell you Mark Cain was cleared. Cleared the involvement, they never investigated Mark Cain. So they went into the appeal court and told the appeal court judges that uh, no exist, the essays did not exist. And they, they, so they paid me a liar about Mark K. And the essays were found by the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission in 2013, hidden in the police files. Police production files. Lord Beckett, a man called Lord John Beckett, Lord Beckett, KC, he's now a High Court judge. But at the time, he was a advocate deputy fighting the appeal. So McDonald finally went into the appeal court, I think 2008, I might be wrong here, 2007, 2008. And um, Donald Finley's arguing about this new suspect, Mark Kane. And he says, nah, the essays didn't exist. Ah, the essays existed. And the police just told lies. Listen, I mean, but the, the big case right now is everybody's, is uh, Andrew Hillington. Hillington. That's well, right. I haven't just got to Malkinson. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, Andrew Malkinson. Malkinson. Oh, there we share that this, this is this is uh, what Sky ah. News reported on Andrew Malkinson. Um ah. I don't know if you can see that, folks. Yes, I can see it. All right. Um so Andrew Andrew Malkinson, police and CPS knew another man's DNA was on the clothes of the woman he was convicted of raping 13 years before he was released. Mr. Malkinson spent 17 years in prison for a rape he did not commit, and his conviction was quashed last month um, in July. Um, so there's an article there um, on Sky. That basically, Scott, you, you can tell us a wee bit, like because it does correlate with, with, with some of the things that are happening with the evidence that should have been used in Luke's case that was maybe discarded. Um, oh. And then, ultimately, we're finding out that some of the evidence was destroyed. Uh, listen, do you know what this case does? First and foremost, I think, it shows the public, see the ones that, that, that they've got their head in the sand, oh, the police would never do that, and why would the police lie, and why would they do this? This, this, this case gives a perfect example for people to realise, listen, this is how it works. This is this is a system. People didn't really want to believe that, but that's genuinely a system. They, 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 this case, um, let's imagine knowing a man's in prison for a crime for 13 years and you're sitting on evidence, forensic evidence that, that proves that man's innocent and you just mm -hmm. sit on that evidence. <laughs> how, how evil is that? And okay. That's not the first one, Scott. No, I mean, that's the oh, most recent that's... one. It's, but there's, there's, been, there's been instances that, of this, certainly through my life. I mean, if you have a look at the the Guildford Four, I think was one. I, and then, I was going to see that. I was going to see we Paddy Hill, Birmingham Six. You remember he said he people in here can he just spell fucking justice? Never mind the spell it. Do you remember? Because they had, they had him in there, I think sixteen years and knew it wasn't him, right? And and, and Birmingham Six. So the, because there's IRA connotations, you're only folk that ah, they fucking they, they should have been jail or that stuff, right? But this one, this um, Andrew's case here is perfect. Because it shows you how corrupt and, and how evil these people are to deal with. Listen, I'm, we, we, we found out about these swabs maybe, how, how long ago, six, seven months ago now, and try to find find where these swabs are. Now, we, I know I know the per, the person's name who does these swabs. So we write, right. we write to the police, the police key are, listen, what happened roughly in this, after they murdered in a small town 2021, uh, the police started gathering up everything, everything in this case to destroy it, right? And uh, so a couple of people, somebody got told, somebody went, a, a police whistleblower told people, but they never, they never, the people never took the significance here. They didn't believe it was happening. They, uh, maybe somewhere down the line they thought that there wasn't going to happen. Then the, the, the police whistleblower comes back and starts telling us much more details. 
and then showing us the lists and blah blah blah. And then, but this, so we write to them, the top one of the top QC in Scotland, write to them and demand that they stop right there now. If you're destroying them, they come back first later, they admit, yes, we have been destroying evidence, and they come back, we will stop right now. But by the time you say we'll stop right now, they're destroyed, they've destroyed everything. Aye, well, I mean, you've got, Living, you've got Livingston, who's who's recently resigned um, as the, the chief of uh, Police Scotland. Um, and he, he, the, I mean, there's, if, the, I'm going to do a wee screen share here. I, I sh shared it earlier on. This is Carlton Jocks uh, talking about um, Livingston and the destruction of evidence, you know, um, and it's it, it's documented that there was a... Um, a tribunal going on, an employment tribunal against some somebody else, uh, and this this was all going on in the background. And there's the allegations and confirmation that uh, they were ordered, as you say, to destroy certain certain e evidence. Um, Look, Peter, I don't like going into conspiracy theories because people then start. Um, so I'm careful about the triangle doing that because people's just they, 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 they devoid the critical thinking, so they start shouting conspiracy and all that. Mm -hmm. We'll just deal with facts. 2003, when Ian Livingston was questioned about a sexual assault at Tully Allen, right? Aye. He's a chief superintendent, if I remember the rank. So he's he's climbing a ladder, eh? very powerful in the police. I believe a Freemason, but what that's got to do with this or not, but I believe so anyway. And uh, anyway, in 2003, he gets accused of a sexual assault. And he appeals and, and, and it hits the press. And what did he do? He called in his friend Craig Doby to investigate who leaked this information to the press. So 2003, Craig Doby is uh, the, 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 the leading officer in the Jody case, right? So he's helping Ian Livingston. 2021, when Channel 5 start raising questions, murder in a small town. So that's not true. Sam Poland from BBC done it way back in 2005. But Channel 5 and them um, raised the profile right in 2021, murder in a small town, and then the evidence started getting destroyed. Now, who's in charge of that evidence? Sir Ian Livingston. Who's he pals with? Craig Dobie. Now, that's, that's no me telling me, oh, they definitely phoned them and done this or whatever. Inspired. I'm just saying facts. They two have been mm -hmm. uh, close colleagues, close friends, call it anything you want for them. Um, do you know, a long, long time. Aye, I, I, but again, it, it leads to mere question. And as you say, people will, will are quick to say, "Oh, this is conspiracy. That's that's not true. That's no factual." You know what I mean? And even even with all, all of the evidence and and what's what's uh, getting made public now, Scott, um, mm -hmm. there's been productions destroyed. There's again DNA uh, on. Jody's clothes that that wasn't used in the case. Can you tell us a wee bit more about about that? Yeah, listen. I think this is only my personal opinion here. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to destroy the swabs. I think they're going to destroy everything. Now, for for all your trolls and people who shout, "Ah, oh, you should have done this and you could have done this and you should have done that," well, you can't, they, they just don't understand that all you can do professionally is write letters to the crown to try and access the productions. We did that and found out they were being destroyed and we tried to put a stop to it. They promised us they, had, they weren't going to stop it and then just kept destroying. Now, now we were finding it difficult to find out what they've done with the swabs. Police Scotland, in, in their initial letter, if I remember right, I'm going by memory, they, 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 they admitted that they still had the swabs and they gave us a guarantee that they wouldn't be destroyed, right? But that's Police Scotland. Police Scotland are then thereafter handed over the, all these swabs to police authority. It's a different body altogether, right? So you write to the police authorities, no, we haven't got these samples. You write to police Scotland, no, we haven't got them. So they, then you have to try and figure out where, exactly who, who's got them, where they are, because people are denying them. Now, we've got the name of the person that's got them in police authority. We, like, why, why would they stall such things? One, me personally, I think they're going to destroy them. I think by the time things get, there'll be nothing left. There'll be nay swabs, nay sperm samples. They'll, they've left it in a fridge that they forgot to turn on or, or they burnt it along with this stuff by a, a mistake. And, right? That's only my opinion.
Oh, Scott, are you still there? Right, Scott, we seem to have lost you. Um, oh, you're, ba you're back again now. Ah, listen, I've been listening to Andrew Malcolm's case. There's a, 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 a massive issues in disclosure. I think Luke Mitchell would win, his, uh, win an appeal right now on disclosure alone. But if he wins his appeal on disclosure alone, then it's a miscarriage of justice and he get released. But would they, then, then free the killer and the police officers who acted criminally, map. And so nobody would ever be investigating. The case would be closed and it would go down as a miscarriage of justice based on disclosure. If we can get the swabs, now I only learned this yesterday, and uh, there's human rights now, now Peter. The, see, see we the advancement of science. DNA improves every year, eh? and it's massively improved since 2003. And it's against your human rights to deprive you of the improvement in science, <laughs> right? So where we are now is, uh, listen, if the police are playing silly buggers with, with with samples and you're not getting to the samples, they have to be tested in our, our, our lab, laboratory. So well, I'm not having to care who, who tests them, where they test them. As long as you had an independent supervisor, Joe, you know, right, in a police, I'm not care. Um, or, or ask the, or request that the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission carry out these samples, right? And they list the samples and, 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 and get the commission to get them for the police. They might get them easier than a defence lawyer, right? And uh, the do you then trust the commission because you have withheld information for us for 2013? But, but if the samples are tested, we'll get the killer. That's my opinion. If and I think for that reason, I think they'll destroy them. I think the police will destroy every sample of us. And uh, they'll they'll, they'll give an apology, Mitchell, and he'll and, and he'll get um based on just disclosure and the breach of human rights, you know, all that, and to Article 6, you can't get an appeal because this erroneously destroyed the evidence and, and they'll get out, but they'll never, ever pursue the police who framed the wee boy. That's my, that's what I think. That's my opinion of where it sits right now, Joe. Aye, because it, it as, as we've said earlier, Scott, it's getting more traction and more people are becoming aware of it, and more people, oh, yeah. I think, and you mentioned critical critical thinking earlier on, more people are, are seeing other things that are happening um, not just in Scotland, um, but the, on the wider part of the island, and going, well, wait a minute, this is a miscarriage of justice here. How can we stand up for these people when you've got the people in that have the levers of power destroying the evidence that could potentially free them? What chance do we have? Hey, well, listen here, for, for your, again, they need conspiracies here. Just facts, we'll just keep the facts, yeah. right? The, pros, the, the advocate deputy, deputy in this case is, is Alan Tumble, Lord Alan Tumble, mm -hmm. right? He also prosecuted Al McGrackey, right? And uh, two miscarriages of justice. Anyway, I, and this is only the gossip in the legal fraternity. When Luke Mitchell got guilty, they were all shocked because, what? Well, how, how, how did he ever, how did he get found guilty, right? And uh, Alan Tumble was shocked and surprised that, that, that he got the verdict at Allegedly, the High Court Judge Lord Memo Smith says it was the best closing closing speech you'd ever heard in a murder trial, right? Mm -hmm. Other people are flabbergasted that a jury, but a majority of jury, by the way, bought that stuff. But listen, they were buying stuff because it had been preached to them. Listen, it, it, the worst media coverage or the most intense media coverage I've, I've ever seen, apart from like COVID or the, the Iraq war or you know, like uh, Putin. Luke Mitchell got treated worse than Putin. Do you know what the yeah, So the jury bought it right. And uh, Dorothy Bain's married to Dorothy Bain, who's in charge of the Crown. Lord mm -hmm. Advocate. She's married to Alan Tumble. And then uh, when Luke Mitchell was found guilty, she was over the moon also. Delighted. Ah, my husband or my husband to be here. My, my partner's got what his, his best victory, his best legal victory he's ever had in his career. Aye. It's, right. It's so, now, I'm not telling you Dorothy Bain signed anything off because there's no paperwork. And I'm not saying Dorothy Bain definitely took part in the destruction of the evidence of Luke Mitchell. But Dorothy Bain's in charge of the Crown, and the Crown gave permission to, to police Scotland to destroy all productions that were not on the indictment. That means a lot of stuff that was hidden for the... Right? So she's now protecting her husband's position, whether she signed it. There's nothing signed. It's all done on the phones. 
And then people say, ah, just write to the Lord Advocate. You write to the Lord Advocate who says been prosecuted the case. What chance have you? Well, again, it's it's as if uh, everybody's got a connection. Um, and the connection that they appear to have, um, Disney favour uh, Luke Mitchell and also a Disney favour getting justice for, for Jody Jones either. No, well, listen, I'm, I'm talking about this the other day, no, listen, that's my first and foremost bit. I want justice for Jody Jones. Folk, folk say you're a Luke Mitchell supporter. I'm no. Listen, I, I, the, time, the time I met Luke Mitchell and spoke to him, he's a very polite boy and he, I can't even... We're walking, you can only speak how you find it. And uh, and, and his mother, uh, listen, his mother sometimes hard work. I, I like old Corey, and obviously sometimes he hard work. But I've never seen any man. i never met a killer. i never met any of this beast and right. But I'm not a Luke Mitchell supporter per se. I spoke out before Luke Mitchell was ever arrested or taken to court or anything. I spoke out because of Jody Jones. And, and that's still my, uh, my, my motive, really, yeah, from being honest, I feel the very start is Jody Jones. And over the years, obviously, listen, they, they may involved you get and then and the more you read and the, your opinion changes a wee bit. That, but my, my whole motivation is, is Jody Jones's murder. That, that wee girl deserved better than much. My way, fairly in family as well. The police treated her despicably. Listen, me. That, Craig, Craig Dobie's treatment of Jody Jones and the way the way the photographers and that dragged her along that crime scene left her out all, overnight without a, a tent over her destroying this and that. And just listen, the, the whole murder scene is just the, the investigation, not even an investigation, but the whole investigation is total disrespect to Jody Jones. Total disrespect to that girl. And I can, people say he's playing on the whatever. It's true. They, 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 I read somebody earlier used the word fit up and, and, you, and when you use that you always think uh, people start thinking again you're falling into conspiracy but they did fit up a boy. <laughs> there, isn't another, there isn't another way you can explain this Peter. They fitted up a child. They, 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 they made a murderer off a child. Now Luke Mitchell was quite a weird child. He admits that himself and all that and when you look in it he wasn't any weirder than <laughs> anybody else that's involved in this whole scenario. Aye. I think Jody were pretty close, they liked each other. Listen, they, they weren't heavy and they were the hash smokers, they weren't they? <sighs> Luke Mitchell wasn't any weirder than what Jody was. Jody, do, do you get me? And then the people out, outside Jody and Luke, oh, listen to me, Luke, 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 Luke like a choir boy, all oh, this Marlon Manson stuff. Listen, do you know, I want to, do you know, after one thing I remember reading, and they, they spy on him in the house, they've got a oh, little liaison officer getting used as a spy. Eh? Sitting in Mitchell whole household report back when she's meant to be there. Anyway, Luke, Luke sings. Do you remember the song um, Oh Kim by Eminem? Aye. He played that and sung it to the officer and had this doing his evidence against him for the murder of Jody. Right. I was thinking, what? Oh, how, 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 how did he tarnish him? He just spent 15 or 16 months just full blown, devil worship or sleep with his man. It was torturing animals. It was, it was all just nonsense, Peter. So you were genuine when you look into Luke Mitchell. Looks, as I say, listen, he's a weird boy, and, and you've got plenty of folk that were at school. I'm saying he was weird, and other folks saying he was a big laddie, and he was a bully, and this, and he'd done this. But generally speaking, there were no talk to the animals, no mad acts of violence, and all that, mm -hmm. and all this stuff about um, knives. Listen, he was a soap bar, he smoked hash. Now, come on, you had cannabis back in 2003 with soap bars. You, every, if anybody knows soap bar, you need a knife to, to roll a joint, do you know what I mean? So you've got all these drug dealers and Matt police knowing that they're drug dealers being evidence against Mitchell for carrying knives and being a drug dealer. He's 14, nearly 19 and 20, and they're getting evidence for the police, to the police about Mitchell's character. Just listen, the whole thing, Peter, for, for day one, for, for the first hour in this case, the whole thing stinks. And uh, listen, you can, I can reiterate again and again and again. And uh, the, the, the only thing that can win this case and, and, and I don't think there's any winners here genuinely because the only one I really listen, if old Missy Mitchell could see her son, I suppose, before you know, before she died or whatever, right? There might be a wee winner in that, but there isn't a winner here. Jody Jones is we got all murdered, right? And a wee boy was taken off the streets and locked away for imagine being locked in the prison for 20 years as a beast. Aye. You've never been in, in the prison for a bank robbery or something, right? 10 years and you've, you've not done it, but you're a bank robber here. You know what I mean? You've been in that prison as a, as a you've been in the custody of 14, 15 year old boy. Pullman's one of the most violent places in Scotland, everywhere as well documented. 
So he goes into Pullman, he's going to tight in there, and he's had to go through shots and everywhere. 20 years in the jail is a, is a horrible beast. And then, that's torture, that's human. What they, listen, I understand why police would dare to a, a bank robber and they can't catch him for a murder and they, they dare us, but this was to a child pup. Listen, I can't go into detail, and I have to be careful when I say this, because I don't want to. Do you know that what the, the police have been spoken to recently, and I can't tell you great detail on that right now, but people have been spoken to, like uh, Dickie and, and uh, Alan Owens and other people have, been, people have spoken to them, do you know what I mean? And, uh, and the police have been spoken to also, and do you know the, the, the whole argument to the whole thing? But we, but we know things that you don't know. Like what? <laughs> like what? Now, they had that flimsy case against Mitchell. If they knew anything, anything else about him, they would have made sure it was in the papers. Eh? They, they, they had, the, they, they had their, 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 their hacks on a daily basis, they printing lies and just nonsense about Mitchell Constant. So all they had to do was feed them what they knew that we didn't know. That's all I wrote. And there's a few officers within Dal Keith now tell you they don't believe Mitchell's guilty. And there's other ones tell you the only ones that believe Mitchell was guilty is the ones that worked on the team. Hmm. Right, and uh, but that doesn't that does or or changing opinions. One thing, Pierre, and I said, by the way, it's a good thing. I say, listen, see, for a year you were getting dogs abuse every day. If you mention Mitchell, hey, what are you doing? Detecting abuse? No, no, people have woke up, but that, but that doesn't they doesn't they doesn't they look Mitchell any good? Eh? It's it, it, again, it's you, you've got that as you say, people have been talking about it for years, and the people that know more about the case, um. <laughs> might be further along with the information that, that, that they're aware of that others are just new coming into finding out about it. Um, what would be the best way for everybody to get up to speed with the most available information, Scott? Listen, do, do you know the best blog? Listen, Dr. Lee and, and, and others have got groups, face, Facebook groups, right? And, and I believe, Sandra, I believe, keeps them up to speed as much as I think she can. And listen, me personally, I would let me out than Sandra does, but that's her, that's her business, that's, that's her, 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 her war or whatever. Eh? But uh, the information on there, uh, but do you know one of the best blogs I've ever read? There's a man called John Smythe. Aye. Right, John Smythe Investigations. Now, yeah, what can I tell you? Listen, I, 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 I drew attention to John Smythe because he's investigative work inv involved in Alex Hammond. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I knew, oh, listen, this, this man's investigative works first class. He's writing and he's, oh, it's first class. <laughs> right, and, and, and brilliant. He was genuinely grateful to me. He took up the fight for Mitchell. And he, he's got, a, he, he sent me, he's, he's got a couple of vlogs now for Mitchell. He sent me one the other day, 700, 700 items uh, for the media before Mitchell went to trial. Before wow. he went into the court of law. 700 pieces of media. Devil worship upon this scene. Eh, no other suspects. We're not looking for anyone else. 14 year old schoolboy, Luke Mitchell. Right? And, and that's within days, Peter. 700, 700, think of that. Every, every day we're opening a paper. Listen, I don't know if you've ever been under me, media scrutiny. It's no nice, right? They didn't like it back. If you ever see the pictures, they're all standing inside Mitchell. So, right, there's maybe 10, 11 of them all here in the ball. And cameras and they, they can take pictures for you a mile away, right? So they get you in a good picture or a bad picture. <laughs> Do you get me? If they catch you smiling, they'll know you exactly wait till you're arguing with your pal and they'll twist it. And, and, and they were camped outside that house or raking buckets. And for how long? Do you know? And uh, so, so, I under, so I understand how Corey Mitchell, very naive, played into their hands a wee bit, you know? And Luke sticking the middle finger up at him. But see if he had been a wee. If he had crawled in, in a ball and hid, hid in the room, they would have seen that about him as well. Eh? They would have said, oh, he's away hiding because he's guilty. And he's defying you, a 14 year old, getting at him. Listen, they're, they're harassing you on a daily basis. And um, did you ever see the interview, Peter, with um, Matthews for Sky? Aye, aye, the, the one that he done in, the, in uh, Corrine's house. Yes, he did, Jody's right. I watched Corrine the other night there. Well, listen, Corrine mentioned it last night that. Murder in a small town, right? And, and that's how's my mind, right? See, for years, genuinely, for years, I always wondered. James Matthews asked questions that only police officers would have known to ask, and they would have cops would have had to ask him under caution, right? So 
I've always thought my I always believed that Matthews had went in there with an artillery of motive. You wouldn't go in there to get an interview and watch a, a, a son and a mother. By the way, she was touching his ear and his ear. That made, made them, uh, them having sex. Listen, touching comfort with somebody is under that much pressure. Well, okay, listen, you can look at a picture and different. But Matthews went in there with, in my opinion, with an agenda. He asked questions, right? So for years, I see he's been quite, he's been coached, he's been coached before he went in that house. And I, a couple of years ago, God rest his soul, genuinely, people maybe pull me up for this, but I like, I like Bennett, a, a Labour councillor for Dal Keith. Mm-hmm. An old miner with my dad and all that, right? And uh, I was reading your book, Scott, and he had always believed that Mitchell was guilty, right? He, he, he's part of the council in Dal Keith, so he's part of the police and all that, and council buildings and Mitchell's a beast. And he was always in that opinion. And anyway, he says to me one day, uh, so I'm reading your books and fucking well done. I think he was meaning well done that you could read and write. You no, know, because in my past and he, he always laughed at me a while then. And uh, he says, I was reading in your book about that uh, Matthews, man. You know, no James Matthews, Scott. I said, no, how, how would I can James Matthews? Well, he says, he stays, he's, he's in Newton Village. Well, Newton Village is where my dad stayed. My mother was born in Newton, well, raised in Newton Village, that and all. And this is a tiny wee village outside another wee village, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I said, what? He said, James Matthews. And he says, just for the record, Scott, do you know who his brother is? I said, no. Uh, David Matthews. Ha! The community policeman in Dalkeith. The community the policeman that's going to be everywhere in Dalkeith, all your minors clubs, your sports, your boxing clubs, football clubs, golf clubs, whatever. Mitchell's a wee bastard. We've got him, we've got him. We just know what not on our phone him yet, but we can it's him, we know it's him. So the whole Dalkeith are listening to this community cop are saying that we can it's him. So all the holy Dal Kiefer turning against this young boy. And then they, and there's his brother in who's asking questions only a copper could ask. You know, he's he's now deleted that that interview. And I don't know, I don't know why or what, you know. I've asked him many times to try and talk. Could you tell me how? Uh, Brian Matthews, I think, retired the copper. He, he retired just a couple of years ago. A terrible name, but everybody will tell you, you know. He told everybody prior to 2003 that Luke Mitchell was guilty. And, and we just can't get that on him, but we can't. It's that wee bastard that done it, and that's that fed Dal Keith for for the last 20, nearly twenty years. So I would think the last five years Dal Keith changed massively, right? But for the last nineteen years, that's that's what kept the whole Dal Keith public think blue or spotlight on Luke Mitchell. Hello. Oh. Still here. I'll, I'll Hello. Just, I, I'll just put you on the big picture there. That was always just try to put you on the big picture. Ah, all right, sir. I thought you were going to be in life. <laughs> no, no, I'm still here. I've just put you on the big picture just so that folk can see you. Um, and we, we know that his reporting is, is very biased towards the agenda that his employers are trying to push. It wouldn't have been any, any different way back then. And as you say, we, we am having a brother who was the community police officer for that area. Um, Luke Mitchell was was set up to be guilty by the media, and then as you like, because the, the the brothers are a community police officer, it's been said that all that information was fed to the media from the police. What's your thoughts on that? I definitely listen. I'm looking for I'm as bad as you were. Ah, yeah, definitely. We threw it out. Listen, we threw it out. Um, listen, I keep mentioning that I'm not going to mention it. Right? Ah, I won't. Jane, I won't. Listen, she's been vicious for 20 years and anybody ever spoke out or anybody who, who questioned, do you know, the police narrative. They were attacked and bullied and smeared. Here's an example for you. Neil Mackay, do you know, the, the, Herald. Aye. the Herald. Again, the, listen, I think he blocked me on Twitter. I do apologize but for the Alex Salmon stuff, right? But I met Neil Mackay many years ago. We, we, we done a walk with the V and stuff, right? Uh, for um, miscarriage of justice, Mojo, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, myself, Paul McGawk, I can't remember who else, but Neil McKay was it. And, and, and he had told us what he told you the other night. He, had, he got a phone call for police because he wrote a, an article that questioned the investigation. Um, he, he gets a phone call for a senior police officer, and, and, and all the time has been an investigative journalist, right? Working in the troubles, IRA, the UVF, he had never received nothing like this before in his life. But then he, he, he 
he gets a phone call r- roughly telling him what, what you're doing writing about Luke Mitchell, he's this and he's that. And uh, well, if, if he is this and that, prove it. Take care of the city court. And then um, so so the media the, the media were fed every bit of nonsense. Every single bit of nonsense. And uh, and, and and I've been defending the, the Daily Record Jane Hamill have been defending the police ever since. Now I, I understand the leaving gear of I didn't worry about at the beginning, when there was a media frenzy, you want to call it. Uh-huh. Like, uh, you remember watching old cowboy films, Pierre? We, we, your, lunch, your lunch mob. Aye, aye. That's what this was. A lunch mob. That's him, it's him in the off. Big frenzy for Mitchell Wright. There was a media frenzy. Oh, come to say, and everybody's wanting on the bandwagon, right? A young reporter. Oh, I want to make, make it. I want to. Um, I want to make a career. I want to do this. Do you know all that, right? So you can understand why, right? But then see, after the years, it's all settled and the dust settles and you start looking at your fresh pair of eyes and you see, oh, wait a minute here. Oh, well, I've done this and uh, this was near there and that. And you start, you must start questioning. People in the jury are questioning themselves, never mind the journal. And the Daily Record just read re- relentless. I'm shocked that the Daily Record never run my story on Wednesday about um, oh, some nonsense about uh, the, the two police officers or Sandra Lean or myself or anybody, you know, that was involved in that programme. Because every time that something like that happens, all you get in the Jane Hamill 10 hard facts. Please, please ask your viewers, go and Google the 10 hard facts and read them. And, and, and genuinely, if you, how can you read this and, and believe in and they read the, the right? Do you know what I mean? You heard it in, in the, the program the other night, they were speaking about the condom, Pierre. Mm-hmm. There's a condom 15, meter, 15 meters by you. That's not a great distance line from my. Twice in my life, from my living room or whatever, right? But it's not a big area. 15 metres away from where a wee girl's tied up, mutilated and butchered, with a wee blue ankle socks put back on, right? They find a condom with fresh semen inside it. Now, I've read plenty of forensic books. And... <laughs> what went to this week? Crime and pre- prevention. <laughs> right, or that, right? I read plenty, plenty of that stuff and I go into stuff, right? Criminal minds and criminal scenes and... and uh, as I said, anyway, they, I've just lost track because of that book. And they, 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 what they've done to the crime scene, Peter, they, they, they botched it, right? They, 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 they walked over it, they cut away branches. Do you, do you know they took a man called David Dickey? David Dickey, Gordon Dick, I got it mixed up. David Dickey, the father. Right, the father's at the, the locust, his son's here at the time of murder. And they're that lackadaisical or that criminal mind, they call, whatever way you want to call it. David Dickey then goes back over to this wall, right? And he, he climbs over the wall where Jodie is found at six, quarter to six at night. He told me a couple of weeks ago when we, when we spoke to him that he was here about half five, quarter to six. I said, how do you know that? Because I met my two pals up at Newburgh. So a man who's at the murder scene 15 minutes or 20 minutes after a wee girl was butchered, instead of them treating him as a suspect, well, they were. Two were asking him about sexual relationships with Jodie and how, how he had made a pass at Jodie and stuff, right? And that's some police officer, but his other police officers that his pals would then take him back over to where Jody was found. And they take him back over to his spaniel dogs and they ask him to be an expert witness. So he's got blood on his shoe, but they can't now say he got for the murder because they've taken him in the murder scene. Now, that's quite you know, common. It reminds you of the Stephen Lawrence case. See, see in London, it's the corruption and police speaking to their pals and, and treating people that should have been suspects is, is like, Expert witnesses and that, the whole thing, the whole thing sting. I'm, I'm, I'm raging. I can't remember what I picked that book up for. Do you know, like talking about that thing? And uh, listen, the, the, the media, I think the media, the, the, the lies, Alice, I, and the, the condom 15 meters away. Now, reading this, or the, anybody with common sense, anybody ever watched fucking Frost or anything, anything on the telly with a detective, if you find a, a condom fully free semen. 50 metres away from a mutilated corpse, stripped naked wee girl. The first thing you do is you, you find out who owns that condom. <laughs> they find, do you know what, the, the records reports, the condom of it was of no, no importance to the case as it wasn't a sexual crime. That's what yeah. the daily record tell the public, and the public are meant to believe this. The first, well, listen, well. The, 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 anybody with common sense tells you you have to find out who owns that condom. Who's semen is that? Three years, three years of waiting. And they waited, the, the lad he got charged, and I call him a laddie because he gets a little stink. I don't believe he's involved in the murder, right? Um, anyway, they find him three years later because he, he gets charged with some other crime. 
an assault, I believe it is, or breach of pieces. And his DNA is taken. And when they put it in the database, it rings true to the condom. So they find the man three years after after the murder. And they just said, um, three, three years after the murder, they trace the guy by accident, no by any detective work or whatever. And um, he goes to the papers, him and his ma. Oh, it wasn't he my son? It definitely wasn't he my son. My son wouldn't do that. And that's what all the mothers are saying in this case, you know. And they, and they never ever found out why he was in the woods. His excuse was, I shouldn't have laughed, but his excuse was 300 yards for his house to go into the woods to have a, what he called a clean wank. I've never heard that before in my life, and I've been around the boot. Um, 300 yards to go into the woods, and then by the way, he went back in the woods the next again day. Me personally, I, the laddie, I call him a laddie again, he's no, he, I, don't, I genuinely don't believe Faulkner's going in on the day with his murder. I believe where, where his condom was found and where Jody was found very close to is like a gang hut. Right, right the, the trees are failed and all that. The bulk we campfires and they sit and smoke their hash and they whatever, right? And that his condom was found there. My, my, my theory or, or my understanding over the years is he was here with somebody at 15, 14 or 15, he was 19 at the time. And because she was underage, he would never see, but they, they only found that out like three years after it happened. And then they, years later, he told people in his work he was here with a married woman and all that, and, and he wasn't going to name her. But nobody ever investigated why he was. Okay. Nobody, they just took his word that he walked in the woods and had a clean wank. Le- left a condom 15 metres away from where Jody was. Aye. And we've not mentioned, or, or, or at least I can't remember mentioning, the Moped Boys. Listen, he's now named J- John Ferris, now calling himself John Walker. Sometimes Ferris and Walker, right? He's a. Uh, if, if you looked into his personality now, he, he, he would have been a person of real serious interest if, if the, I mean, last year turned up need and he was on the scene. He's Jody's cousin, right? On, on a day, he's been with Jody's brother. They've been smoking bucket bongs for days. You know, bucket bongs, eh? For Aye. many years, it's too posh. They're like, they're blowing your head off the hash, eh? I mean, <laughs> right? And he, they've been on it for days. We'll go back to Jody's brother about his mental health and hash and all that, right? But John Ferris is a hash dealer. He's selling hash back and forth to his mum and other people. He's been with John Fer- uh, Joseph Jones that day and he's been with him for three days smoking bucket bombs, right? Him and a guy called Gordon Dickey are at the V. The very, the very spot where Jody's found, they, they're found, they're mopeds here at the very time that Jody's time of death, quarter past five, right? Now, quarter past five is a good time. We'll just, and that's the police time we murder. And uh, there's nothing, to, there's nothing to establish that time, and there, but there's nothing to disprove it either. They never took, they never um, took rigor mortis tests and, to try and get the, the exact time of murder. So it's quarter past five, right? So they have more pigs here at quarter past five. They go home on that night of the murder, right? On the night of the murder, anybody, come on, anybody who knows any kind of criminality for a scheme or anywhere else, know you destroy clays and you destroy your appearance and you burn clays and all that, right? And, and they carry out every one of the acts. John Ferris was cutting his own hair with his scissors, right? He didn't want to look like the killer. And then he didn't want to look like the stocky man, Jody's brother, who, who mm-hmm. had curly way be here, and so did Ferris. So Ferris cuts all his own, his own hair. He goes to the scrappy that night and he, and he scraps a moped, right? Everybody knows scrap the vehicle, burn the clays. His sister... Yvonne Walker, who uh, and his mother Catherine were burning clays um, on the night of the murder in a place called Stone Place in Mayfield, and the police discovered these burnt cl- clothes because a lot of locals phoned in. And several, not one or two, by the way, several phoned in. These two people are burning clothes, so they go and find the clothes, and there's a uh, Kenny neck, no neck ties, what they? Kenny plastic ties you get. Uh, cable grips or cable ties. Cable, cable ties, cable ties, was cable ties and clothes and baby clothes in and amongst what was getting burnt. And the police says, uh, uh, there was in really enough no interest to us because these burnt clothes were in the wrong area. We're talking in an area maybe two miles away from where Jody lived, two and a half miles from where Jody lived, right? But in a house there, the way they're burning the clothes is for, for our granny, Sue Alice Walker, the, the search party one woman, right? And they uh, and, and Yvonne Walkers. Now, both of the houses were, were frequently used by Jody Jones. Like, Jody used to go up to Yvonne Walkers or, and, uh, to, to smoke cash and use it as a gang hut, you know, like teenagers do, right? 
So you've got somebody no far from Jody's gang hut and Ander Granny's burning clays and the police never took any notice yet. Says it was in the wrong. And we only found out that they had remains of that again in 2023 when we went to the police and said, right, what are you destroying? And on this list, hidden for the defence. Burnt clothes, cable ties. And one of them is baby clothes now. Yvonne Walker had a child at that time. I'm not saying it's definitely her clothes, but she's burning clothes. There's baby clothes involved in the burning. Why are you burning clothes on the night? Jody's murdered. Why are you get, get, getting rid of a moped? Why are you cutting your own hair? None of that was ever explored. It sounds, see when you, see when you repeat all that peer peer, people look at you and think, nah, that can't be the case. Because it, it wouldn't matter who, what level a detective, basic detective, what tells you, they people must be of interest. Mm-hmm. Do you know, you won't find where they've been, or they, they never found nothing. They tell you they've done extensive work, that's just pure and utter lies. I'm saying that, listen, I'm open to, I'm not a fool, listen, you're open to, um, the legal proceedings, but I'm telling you, police won't lie when they to come and tell you we're on extensive work and we carry through the best investigation. That's just a dull and lies, Peter. Right. But well, some some of the things that, that I mean, you shared something with me the other day. Um, obviously, we'll not go into, go into the detail of it. Um, but just from my reading of it, um, it's as if it's lies and they're just trying, they've been caught out with the, the first set of lies and they're trying to cover it with more lies. And really? it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make easy for um, getting justice for Jody for the what seems to be a, an unsafe conviction against Luke Mitchell. Um, look, where, where do where does it stop, Scott? Where, how do we? I don't know. I mean, Listen, whose, whose house was closest to where where Jody's body was found? Who was look in in proximity to where her body was found? Who's the Jody? closest house? Aye. Uh, oh. I, I would think Jody, J- Jody's house is be closer to Jody than, than Luke's, but not by far. It's like, um, listen, Jody, where Jody's found it's in a field, you know, a wee woodland strip, um, or only off the top of my head. I would think J- J- Jody's house is probably closer to Jody than Luke's, but not by much, not by much. So you think Jody's? So the body, where the body was found, you think it's a wee bit closer to Jody's house than what it is to Luke's house? Aye, aye, aye. But me, me personally, this is only me personally, my own research. Uh, when I tell you research, people have researched this case. Listen, uh, pe- people read. Listen, you can read and read and read. You can go to John Smythe's blog, blogs right now, and you would have a, a brilliant grasp of this case. Absolutely. <laughs> right on facts, and, all, and I've not done that for years. Listen, I, I sort of gave, I gave up. There's no reason. It's my, my research over the years has been apart from reading what I went to statements. So it's going to speak to people, going walking it, timing it, and doing it right. And uh, Jody, was, in my opinion, Jody was not killed where she was found. Jody was carried there. And uh, when you when you go into what Rowan Dyke's path is, mm-hmm. and, uh, you can take a right and you didn't have to go do now what, what, what they call Rowan Dyke's path and go over the V. V. That was just invented. Nobody ever proved that ever happened. But and then uh, Jody would need somebody to help her over that. Jody, I believe, took a right when she went on the Rowan Dyke's path, and 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 it can take you down to Luke Mitchell's own traf- uh, paths that are well tro- troven, and uh, also over the open field. But you can also take another path down towards the golf club and t- the back of New Battle Abbey, take you into Luke's that way. I think that's where she was killed, and I think she was carried there. And, and being carried there, um, it's consistent with the line of blood on the wall as well, right? But that's that's something that was never investigated, right? The whole thing, that, listen, the whole, when you use the word investigation, Peter, if, if you start anything, anything, any essay or any invest, any research work or anything, and you start off from the wrong premise, you can't come and come up with the right answer. Mm-hmm. Right? And oh. they, they started off wrong. Aye, well, it's, it, it makes it makes it harder for, for everybody else to try and when there's so many inconsistencies, then there are so many possibilities. There's some of the chat, I've been keeping an eye on the chat while you've been talking as well. A lot of people uh, just questioning that like, there's all these names in the mix, and for the 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 police to have fixed on a 14 year old and just. That was the only um, search on his house and on his father's house. It was just his his mother's house and his father's house that were searched. There was no other searches carried out. None, none. His mother's caravan park, uh, like her business, it was on the terrace. Mm-hmm. She had started and listen, all this, she burnt all the clays up there and all that. They found nothing. 
I mean, I mean <coughs> ask anybody, ask yourselves the possibility. How can you do that? I mean, listen, I, I told you, I tell people in my book, I, when I researched this, I took him, um, I, I went to the woods with people for that area, right? People who know and like Joseph Jones, Jody's brother, mm-hmm. about, uh, about hunting dogs, right? You, you know, your lurcher, lurcher, bull, bull lurchers and all that for their deer, and right? And I went to people who know the woods and the fields and like, like the back of their hands, right? They, they, they go to poaching or they become gamekeepers and I've, I've asked them, all right, go and show me how, you show me how you could do this and get to there without that. And at first, when you tell them the facts, they, they look at you like, nah, come on, come on, Scott, you're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. This is, how, this is what the religion happened. And they say, nah, that never happened. And then if you take them and ask them, go and show me how you get to here or there, they never take the road like path and climb the V. And the, the only people that ever do that are strangers to Dalkeith. The police and then judge you going to a court in Edinburgh and they build this wall with a bee and, and she's had to walk down that road. That's just a lot of nonsense. She could have walked half a dozen roads that could have taken her look, right? Mm-hmm. But the big thing, see the, the 515, I'm going to trouble for this, but I was born for trouble. So. <laughs> 515 Jodie's allegedly killed, right? And uh, I've seen it before anyway, so I'll see it again. I'm not scared. But five to five, jo- Jody's seen on, on no far from her home, right at East Towsey's Road, and then she's getting followed what they call that stocky man pier, right? Now the, the big argument online, you'll get all your trolls shouting, "Oh, he was never identified," and you're like, "You're making up that." And they makes up here, and there's no lies here. He, Jody was last seen. Positive identification of Jody Jones, and the last identification of Jody is at five to five on East Towsey's Road, no far from her house, which is consistent with what. They all say in the house that Jody left to go and meet Luke at mm-hmm. that time, right? But she's seen getting followed by a stocky man wearing a, a rucksack. Now, one man says he can identify this person, and and eventually he, he, he identifies another man a week later or something, and he says, I'm sure that's the man I seen last week. And the guy that he points out wasn't he in Scotland at the time, so it couldn't have been him, right? Right. But there's another man. Now, when Jody gets buried, Joseph, Jody's brother, his hair's flattened. Now, I've seen plenty of photographs of that age group and all his pals from school tell me his hair's curly and wavy. Now, that day it's all flattened and that, right? Whatever. But during that that's, um, funeral service, it's on the telly and everywhere else, the second identifier says, that's the man I've seen following Jody. Right? That's the stocky man. Now, Joseph Jones is now seen. So, jo- Joseph Jones is now positively identified, Right? following his sister 20 minutes before she's killed now. In 2013, I think, I'm getting dates wrong, I'm getting seen now in my old age, right? But 2013, I think. Donald Finlay gets asked by the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission if he had known about Joseph Jones following his sister, would he, would he have he incriminated them? Now, Finlay is very correct in saying hindsight's a wonderful thing, blah, 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 and uh, he, he couldn't say he definitely would incriminate them, right? Also, to incriminate somebody's brother, you might take away any sympathy the jury might have for you and think you're a prick for incriminating the family and so it can turn against you. So, tactically, he wasn't even sure he would have done it, morally or legally. He wasn't sure. I'd say it's a wonderful thing. But what Donald Finley didn't know, right, is uh, five weeks, first, well, first, we spoke earlier about an 8-inch blade. Yeah. Right. right. And, and the blade that was found inside the skip where Joseph... Frequented, right? Had an eight-inch blade, maybe maybe more, right? So the blade that was found is capable of doing the damage. I'm not saying that's the knife, or he's saying it's definitely a knife. I'm not saying anything. The forensics would prove who belonged that knife. Right. In 2003, when Jody was killed, jo- Joseph, Jody's brother, had serious psychological troubles, right? Mm-hmm. Very, very serious and very violent. And he carried a backpack with a large bowie knife inside the backpack. So when he was paranoid, he could grab it quickly. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't leave the house without it, right? Now, his medical records state five weeks prior to Jody being murdered, he was sectioned under the Mental Health Act for beating his sister and smashing up his granny's house. He beat up Jody. Now, throughout the, the family discussions on Joseph, they all talk about him ragdolling his sisters or uh, pull, swinging her about with the hair. That's quite... 
for when he beats his sister Janine as well. He grabs him with the hair, he rags Dora. Now that's what happened to Jodie before she was mutilated and murdered. But she was dragged about with the hair first and foremost. Her hair was pulled to her head, right? She's got an MO for but anyway, he gets sectioned. And and they were ministering them um, the, 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 the maximum amount of antipsychotic drugs that the law permits. So you know he's in a bad way. Eh? And uh, they tell you, we don't want him to go back to his home because back in his home, his mother is also psychotic, but she does not force him to take his medication. And she also allows him to sit in his room smoking bucket bombs. And it tells you on his medical record, when he smokes hash, he gets very paranoid. When he's paranoid, he doesn't leave the house without his rucksack and his big knife. So now we've got him following Jodie, 15 minutes, 20 minutes before she's murdered, carrying a, 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 a rucksack with a large blade inside it, like him, all his neighbours and that will tell you, and anybody, this is common within the village, everybody mm -hmm. knows this. So 20 minutes before it, Joseph's behind his sister on East to Sea Road, and uh, with a rucksack and a large blade, where Joseph disappears to thereafter, and nobody knows. There is no alibi, he's allegedly upstairs in his bedroom, his mum can hear him, hear him moving about, but he's sleeping all night, so when he's sleeping, he must have been up there in a jig, so his mother could hear him downstairs. And then the stepfather, who's a... Oh, oh. Anyway, he says when he comes home for work, Janine, the sister, is in the house, and no Joe, and then when Joe gets there, identified as being on East two she's Road, they, they, they identify, oh, no, when I come home for work, it was Joe, it wasn't Janine, the, the statement gets changed. So we're back to Joseph Jones, 50, 20 minutes before Jody's murdered. He's seen walking behind her. Positively ID'd, by the way. Positively ID'd. The jury didn't know about this. The jury didn't know about his medical records. The rucksack with the large blade, right? And then, the, where did they all go for you? Now, at the top of Ron's Dykes Path, we have Joseph Jones and we have Jody Jones. And at the bottom of the path, we have John Ferris, who's Jody's cousin, and a guy called Dickie, Gordon Dickie, right? And then, so the four of them... Two of them are coming up the path and two of them are allegedly going down the path. I'll have to take Joseph into occasion because we don't know where the nobody's ever seen him since he was on East Tuesday Road. So you've got two people at the bottom. So you've got four people in a small circle. You've got Jody lying dead. You've got two guys allegedly on a motorbike leaving the scene, Dickie and Ferris. Where did Joe Jones go? Right. See him at five, five to five, 20 minutes before Jody's beaten, butchered and cut up. He's there, he's, he's, he's identified, Jodie's positively identified by somebody who knew her, so they know, know it's her. And then they report a man walking behind her. So where did Joseph Jones go? You've only got four people in that vicinity. And then a fifth man joins the vicinity, and that's David Dickey, the father of Gordon Dickey. Dickey and Ferris and Moped boys leave the scene and they go right to his home. He leaves his home right away, and he goes back to the V in the wall with his nine spaniel dogs. He tells me just a couple of weeks ago when I spoke to him, and uh, a lot of people have been spoken to by the way. People didn't realise there's a lot of things. But, and um, he tells me a couple of weeks ago, he, he's at the V at the wall. He reckoned half five, a lot earlier than quarter to six. I say, how you see? Because I met my friends at New Battle School, round about six, and he's going over the woods and walking in the field and all that. So he's there after Jody's been killed, and he says that his nine working spaniel dogs didn't indicate to him she's lying 19 metres away. And I says to him, I well, your dogs are not good. Oh, my dogs would have indicated that. I says, so she couldn't have been there when you say she was there. I believe he 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 helped his son and he moved the body. But that's only my that's only me that my, my research and my findings. Eh? That's only me what I think. And uh, anyway, he was there at that time. So there's now five people in the equation, and uh, in that circle at that time in the murder, Joseph Jones just disappears. I think he's late at night, I think nearly one in the morning or something, they ask him his name and his relationship to Jody, and I think he, he's, he's with his mother, and they just confirm, oh, that's the brother, blah, 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 Joseph, and then he disappears, and he, and he disappears for, oh, listen, weeks, Peter, weeks. Like five weeks, listen, they, they, I shouldn't have laughed, but see, when you look at this as an investigation, right, they, they go they go to, um, I was talking to a boy, a, 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 a lifer the other day, about a crime scene, when, he, when this boy got charged with murder, there was four or five people all in the house. Some of them not involved in anything. They never left the house. And the murder happened outside. But when the police arrived anyway, they took everybody's clothes. Everybody's. Shots, no, like, shoes and all their clothes and gave them white suits. And they never done it at Mitchell's. They only done it to look. The, the three people in the search party, part, eh, Jodie's granny, oh, Jesus, she, she should have been jailed, mate. And then uh, Stephen Kelly and, and Janine. Janine's a sister to Jodie, right? She's now a police officer. John Scott, if, please watch Murder in a Small Town again and watch what Lord John Scott says about the three people's statements. 
and it gives you an idea of what you're dealing with. Um, listen, the horse, the horse is poorly looking at the beginning. Oh, his dog acted this way, and he's like, listen, he looked ashen faced and looked worried. Oh, weeks later, by the time the police have made sure he's the only number one suspect, and then no other suspects. Not. Oh, Mitchell just walked right over and climbed over to me, and he walked right, and he was he, and he was emotionless. He just stared, and he, he never had emotions. The police officer never and telling you he was and face and shaking like a leaf and looked terrified. And and how they got away with changing the statements? But didn't he take my word? Please listen to the High Court judge is speaking about these three people's statements, right? And they they, they never got their place to. Old Alice Walker knew where Jodie was that night. She led Luke, a fourteen year old boy, was getting told. 14-year-old boy's not in charge of a woman he, he, he Alice Walker stature. She was a posty, but her family were involved. Some of her family are good people. Some of them were involved in real shit, you know, the, the, the smack and the scheming stuff. And uh, a lot of people accused, ah, a lot of people accused Alice Walker for years. I can't prove that. But a lot of people, Dal Keith and me feel, I'll tell you, Alice Walker was a, a licensee. Right. Yeah, their sons and their grandsons and could get away with them. Get away with murder on your country. I shouldn't have said that, but my grandson got away with murder. That's what I think. But they, they, they got away with a lot, right? She was a local postie, but she was, um, she was a matriarch. Alice Walker was a powerful person. She wasn't getting bullied by a, a lad like Luke Mitchell. So mm -hmm. when Luke Mitchell meets him away at the top of her path, it's her, Alice Walker that insists he going back down the path, right? Then when she gets down to the police station, they didn't take her clothes off for the drive about the O'Keefe. They go to her five days later and they say, Alice, have you got the clothes you're wearing that night? No, I washed them. Have you got Stephen Kelly's clothes and Janine Jones's clothes? No, I washed them. Why did you wash them all together? Well, they're all lying in a big uh, pile in the middle of the floor, so I just washed them. She also threatened, the, the moped boy, John Ferris, he now calls John Walker, right? Anyway, he's uh, Alice Walker's grand, grandson, Jody's cousin. He comes forward after five days, Peter, thinking that your, your cousin's butchered. It's all over the press, all over the news. And the police are asking for two guys with a moped. Please come forward. We need to talk to you. Now, even if you're a crook, you're a bank robber, anything, you want drunk, anything, you want eliminated for that inquiry very quickly. So you go forward there. And if it's your cousin, you want to catch the people who have killed her or whatever. So you go forward there. They never come forward for five days. Five days. In the five days, they're sitting in the house, smoking hash, talking to everybody about what's happened and what, what they should say and what they shouldn't say. And the reason I know is that because they talk like that. The people who were in that surrounding tell you that. Then the grandmother, he tells the police, so I'll never come forward because uh, my granny Alice Walker told me not to come forward. Why would Jody's granny tell anybody in the world not to come forward? It could have helped solve that crime. Uh, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, Scott, did not know. But then she threatened them. Listen, she then Fred John Ferris is now he drinking violence, he's a right up, whatever that. But he was that scared they left Al Keith and he moved away to Ayrshire. The granny Alice Walker threatened her own grandson. My, Joseph's going to fucking do you for talking because he tells the police Alice Walker's told him not to come forward. So they're going to batter him for talking, telling the police this. Why? Why? So these family are going to batter her cousin because he's told her, right? So he moves away to Ayrshire. Jody's mum tells him the same, John Ferris, man, when my John gets you, when my Joseph gets you, he's going to do you. Why would Jody's mum threaten a guy who would tell the police or, or come forward after five days and try to help the police and tell the police or my granny tell me not to come forward? Why would they threaten people? So there's all that. Listen, Pierre, I never had money on it. Money this went before a jury now. I can't go too much in it. It's contempt. It. But I can assure you, a lot of the members of the jury are not happy what happened. Some of them um, have counselling and, and uh, big regrets in it. But imagine they, even the ones that found them guilty if they knew what I know now. If, if you put Joseph Jones into that court and you told the jury, jury about his, his violent past towards his sister, carrying a large knife, his medical records, where he was on the day, you, it'd be virtually impossible to say there isn't a reasonable doubt. If you put Mark, Mark Cain inside a court, your Marlon Manson stuff, and uh, Mark Cain's culture and what he was into, I mean, Luke Mitchell looked like a wee choir boy, a wee, a wee, a wee goth, right? Incapable. And, and that would have created a massive reasonable doubt. So they never got Mark Cain and they never got that. And they never got to know about Joseph, uh, John Ferris. Now, using people like Ferris to t t uh, tarnish a wee boy's reputation. Oh, he's a drug dealer. Every time I see him, he had a knife. Right? There's a hash smoker. Anybody that smokes hash can win that. Anybody smoked hash in 2003 had a knife in their pocket, a wee pen knife or whatever, he cut hash. That's how you, how you smoked it. So he always had a knife. So what? 
Do you hear me? So what is life in his pocket what for? And and they got they get drug dealers in real life. Listen, John Ferris has been into some na naughty stuff. I'm not going into on this. And uh, but to back in somebody else's character, what a joke. Do you know what I mean? Billy Mitchell's not going to previous or uh, whatever and they're, and they're using so those again I'll go back to Andrew case the, the similarities here are, are incredible. Hidden evidence, bad bad witnesses. The crown hiding the evidence for you. It's, um, it's just mad, Peter. It's mad. <laughs> what, what, one day somebody has to break, right? Aye. Uh, I'm hoping it's a politician. There's a couple of politicians recently showed an interest, right? And uh, in particular, see that letter I showed you for the police? Uh -huh. Aye. I've got an MP looking at that for me. To try and get answers because it's it's, it's, a, it's a well put letter. It's no ignorant. I'm not asking you to look at the conviction. I'm I'm, I'm making a complaint about criminality within Law and Order's police mm -hmm. during the murder investigation, and they just spanned it. But the, and a couple of others have shown. There's also there's a couple of people who, who are in Luke's group, right? Who do some pretty good work, Peter. Right. Right. And one of them is meeting two MPs and MSPs this week. Do you know what I mean? And they. Uh, that's where the, it has to come for him. It, it, it has to be a powerful person that can, that's got the power to challenge the Crown, Dorothy Bain. How can you challenge the Lord Advocate who's married to the, 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 the Advocate Deputy who prosecuted this case? How can you, you get me focusing? I mean, you've not done this, and how can you know about this? It, they didn't think for 20 years I'm going to be banging my head off your walls and doors and then, listen, chapping doors or chapping me doors and anybody. In the last couple of weeks, so many people have spoken to me quite. Um, it be quite interesting, eh? And, uh, but it's finding something, Peter. Luke Mitchell, without these swabs, if the swabs can't be tested, Luke Mitchell may get out, and I believe he will, by the way. I, I read the daily record, there's no legal route left for Mitchell. And the folk are right now, by the way, never, never been a court in their life. Or they didn't understand appeal courts. Or, right, but there's, there's plenty of legal avenues. And um, the first one is um, definitely disclosure, right? I think personally that we get Luke Mitchell freed on a miscarriage of justice, just on disclosure alone. But, um, I didn't want that. I, I want these samples tested, but because I think these samples will prove who the colour is. Well, I mean, it, it, it's again, it seems like the most common sense thing to have the samples tested, um, so that the, if anything, people can be ruled out, or as you say. The killer can be identified um, because it, it seems to be, I don't know, the blind leading the blind to try and no find anything yes. else. The, the, the deposits of sperm that's on Jody. How, 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 how on earth can anybody explain that way if, if they're related to Jody? Do you get me? Mm -hmm. I'm the brother, it could be a cousin, it could be anybody, stepdad, I don't know. But some of the sperm is on Jody Jones. Now, that didn't prove that he killed her that day, but it proves that some there was some kind of sexual contact, right? Um, probably that day, or maybe the day before, or whenever she, <coughs> she had showered her babe, whatever, right? So it would have to explain that away. Now, I'm not going to name them, Peter, because the, the trolls start writing to them and emailing them and getting them on Twitter and all, oh, listen, and then the people pull away, right? But recently, we, we, myself and Dalton Bean sat in our forensic um, meeting, right? And uh, when, when we spoke about the sperm, I'm going to say this, people don't like it, but I'll just say it. The sperm deposits are on Jody, on her lips, right? Mm -hmm. Her cheek, her breast, her abdomen and her bum, Right? Now, you can work, take for that what you want. Different people will take different things, but that's where the sperm deposits are, right? So, when we're speaking in, in this meeting, oh, what? And they, 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 they were excited because this is new. This is new, fresh evidence, right? And uh, and if it wasn't fresh evidence, the, the, the technology now available isn't makes a new evidence, so we're all excited, right? And they, and, and they told me in the meeting roughly was, how it, what made them more excited is that it must have been drawn attention to him because because of the blood associated with this case, it must have took a, a real close examination to see the sperm on the lip, considering the cuts and the blood. 
and then and they thought, oh, they've they've pinpointed this for a reason, and then they've just gave up on it. Now, fourteen deposits, you spare them on a wee girl that's lying. They could has tough listen, common sense and decency tells you that they have to be tested. Eh? Aye, absolutely. absolutely. They have to be tested. Um, so listen, um, that, that's that's listen. This is where we are right now, Peter. Uh, Sandra, Doctor Lena, maybe tell you other because she was mayor up front. Me, I pulled back for this months ago. And I'm not really being involved. I'm, 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 go, I'm doing other, doing other things right now, right? But I keep my eye on this case. Listen, Luke Aye. Mitchell's case has to be overturned at some stage, Peter. Aye. Right, um, Peter. Well, to talking about you pulling back. Look, did you pull back because you had other things to do, or did you pull back then you found other things to do? What, to tell us. Listen, I bet you both, Bill. Listen, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. The, the, this case, because you're high, high profile, it, yeah, yeah, it's hard. Listen. The, the stress. Peter, 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 do you know the biggest abuse you get on this for, for Luke supporters? People won't mind your back. See, when I talk to you, you might get messages if people try to cancel me. He's going to write talking about Luke Mitchell. I was involved first. Do you know things like that? For, for, for people that I've never met before in my life, screaming, ah, you're just living. Listen, I'll, I'll state for the record, never have I made a penny. That This case, this has cost me fortunes. People have donated to me over the years. Scott, there's the ex, or there's the ex, do this and it's help. Listen, go to meetings, coffees, trains, fucking meetings in them, right? Over the years, this has cost me fortunes, mate. And then, you, so you got abuse for that. You then, listen, you, you want to fight fight a, a certain war and other people didn't want to fight it. So, I, and then I just thought, listen, just let them continue with the fight and then see where it goes. Listen, I'll always support uh, the wrongful conviction of Luke Mitchell. Because Luke Mitchell didn't kill Jody, right? Mm -hmm. And I just when I stepped back, Peter, I, I just I had to oh, listen. I, I can deal with the trolls. See all your trolls. Oh, there. Listen, I didn't even care about him. I used to bite and, and argue with him and he is good back as a vote and just ignore him now, right? And um, but it's the, the the ones within, pal. The ones within. Yeah, listen, I'm not going to slide people here, but I want to tell you, there's been five different groups. Luke Mitchell's got. Fans, groups, supporters, call them in. You want us with five groups and they'll fall out with each other. Ah, oh, she sees this and he sees And she's been up to see Luke and I've not been in this uh, fight. And you're in the middle of it. Yeah, I, I, and, then, and then, listen, I got a breakthrough one time, a genuine breakthrough. And the sun, sun front page, right? <laughs> Brilliant. And, and I'm sitting here with a big grin on my face. Bang. Yeah. At last, the tabloids are turned. And then at night, I'm sitting here thinking I've done well, what a great day with my father, blah, blah, blah. And I'm getting phone calls from women greeting. Ah, what are you crying for? Oh, look, I'll get any trouble. Oh, you should never have done this, and you shouldn't have named this person. You shouldn't have. Oh, this is going on for weeks. So when you're winning, they're greeting, and then see if you. So I just thought, you know, listen, time for me to step back. And uh, listen, I've kept working. I've kept working there. Uh, I didn't want to let, let things out of the bag. But over the last few weeks, we've spoken to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want I want to tell you what police officer was spoken about. Right now I have to keep stum, but I can assure you, I, 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 a police officer was spoken to this recently, and and three individuals very heavily involved in this case have been spoken to. You know, and the reactions are uh, okay. We'll see what happens. Eh? And um, so I've kept working, kept plugging away and looking for things, and and then re reading the judgment. Yeah, Andy Malkinson. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a big smile because legally, legally, I believe that, that he's in the Supreme Court. So, Andy Malkins, Andrew Malcolmson's case is pristine. That, the, the judgment's coming for the highest court in the land. You can't argue Scotland and England. This is coming for the Supreme Court, right? And then when you look at the things that it says, you no, know, like withholding evidence, they're looking into the Crown Prosecution Service, you no, know, for criminality, for, for holding that back. There's uh, dodgy witnesses, there's dodgy witnesses in the Mitchell case, there's uh, disclosure issues, do you know? They, 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 we know for a fact that the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission sat on evidence for 2013 and that it was favourable to the defence and never passed over. And, never, uh, never passed? Yeah. Sorry, I, I, you cut off there, Scott. What was ah, that sorry. And, uh, so, listen, I, never, I, I stood back for the line, right? I, I said no, the line way. I just stood back and they let, 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 let them all go on it. Listen, I get constant emails, constant message, private messages. Folk tell me who I should talk to and who I shouldn't talk to. One telling me a couple of weeks ago, 
Uh, he, here's an application I made to some uh, a, a London miscarriage and justice organisation, shall we say, right? Then they deal in Scots law. And I've known these people or known of these people for, I don't know, 15 years anyway, right? But here's somebody writing to me, never introduced herself to me or something. This is only one example of a thousand. Never introduced herself either, and they just come in and say, listen, I've written to these people about Luke Mitchell. I can't answer a lot of the questions, so I'm sure you will. And then when he didn't, they started to tell you, you know, fucking did nothing for Luke Mitchell. You should have signed this petition and you, you should have filled in this form that I, I started filling in. You're thinking, what? Do you know, I think I know these people who existed for 15 years. It's, it's, it's just, so I just thought, get this list and let them all go. And then and we'll see where it takes us and who gets who in the court and what, you know. And, uh, but I'm confident, I'm genuinely confident uh, that, that Luke, Luke, Luke will get back in the court. Excellent. I want to ask you um, about, well, obviously we've, we've had a change of first ministers and the new first minister... Um, who was the previous justice minister and health minister? Um, is has there been a, a, an approach made to the first minister about this case? Do you listen, know? You, listen, we went to the parliament last year. Sometime was it last year? We had petitioned thirty thousand signatures. They didn't even acknowledge it. Peter. No. No. Listen, we went to the parliament. This is God's on a shift. You know the only people who come and spoke to us, three Tories. Russell, Russell Finley come because we asked Russell, right? And uh, Russell come in to, and, and spoke to me and Sandra Lee outside the, the parliament, right? And uh, there, there, there was demonstrations outside parliament for a medical malpractice. I can't remember the, 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 the surgeon, but one of the surgeons, uh, Indian surgeons, you know, left the country. There was a demonstration for him, so there was two Tories here. Uh, Liz Smith and, uh, oh, what's it, fucking the big Rangers fan, what's his name? Murdo Fraser. Murdo Fraser, aye. And I had no hijacked him, but I used that situation to get to him and say, excuse me, listen, don't pay attention to this case. And I must give her due Liz Smith offered to pay for a book. I gave him, listen, I bought um, 500 of my books and, and gave them away. People mm -hmm. like, oh, you made me that book. <laughs> Not a penny. We're still got money for lie detector tests. Oh, I listen to that. Uh, that's to pay for a lie detector test. And, and I bought maybe um, 500 anyway. Books and I just give them away. See, wherever I'm going, I'm going in my car and I meet somebody, I'll sign it and give them it. They spread the word, they know for money. And then, um, so we gave Russell Finley one, I gave Liz Smith one, and she offered to pay for it. And I made a joke, got a politician fine for any. But at least I had the courtesy to come and speak, right? Um, 35,000 signatures on the cairn. I wrote to main MP, Joanna Cherry, because I know she's big into justice. And I thought she might have even been a um, thing with Luke Mitchell's mother, you know, like the witch trials. Remember, mm -hmm. they just pardoned witches for 300 years ago. They can't, oh, right. they can't pardon fucking Corey Mitchell. And they treated her worse, worse than a witch. They just tarred her with a brush, brush for 18 months and then, ah, we will drop all the charges right down with we've locked your son up, fuck off, with her, and left a woman desolate, do you know what I mean? Right. So I thought Joanna Cherry, and uh, listen, maybe you know Joanna Cherry herself, but uh, I got, I got a, a response back, uh, that's all. Roughly, you know. Aye. Um, a parliamentary assistant. Uh, justices are devolved, Mark. I've heard that now a couple of times for Joanna, but justice isn't devolved for Joanna, not just Joanna, but for all of them when it's uh, what they perceive to be injustices in America or Canada or wherever else in the world, their voice and opinions. Aye. Justice is devolved when it's a wee laddie rotten in a, in a Scottish jail. By the way, I keep reiterating that. Luke Mitchell's a child, 14. Mm-hmm. Right? Talk, talk. Talking about children, right? I'm going to take you away for this case for a wee minute and ask your yeah. thoughts on something because oh, yeah. I was doing a, a documentary with a child abuse survivor and campaigner, Dave Sharp. Oh, yes, yes. Um, who the first two parts are available on Rumble, as a matter of fact. The, th the third part will be out tomorrow night for any that's keeping in tune with it. Um, now, in that, uh, it documents Dave's journey for he was placed into a, a care home uh, within. Um, his mother died when he was about a month old, or just older than a month old, and he was placed in a care home in Kilmarnock, um, Nazareth House. And we went through the, we went through his journey so far, he, the abuse that he received while he was in the care home, then him becoming uh, addicted to, he became homeless, he became addicted to, to drugs and spiralled into a, a life of drugs and crime. Then he turned his life around and he became a campaigner. Um, and then he was... He was charged uh, with 
um, allegedly assaulting somebody. Um, and he, he never had any meeting with his lawyer because it was during the pandemic. There was no information given to him like, as what the charges were that he was facing. He, he, he was under, he was taken into custody without a warrant. The, the police came to his house, took him without a warrant to a, a police station in Scotland. Ultimately, and I'm not going to give too much away because it's got to be coming out the more uh-huh. on, on the thing we, on the podcast. Um, it was jailed for 30 days. Um, he was sentenced 70 days, then it was reduced to 60 days, and he only done 30 days of that. He was jailed in Shorts Prison, which is where Luke is currently. Um, now, he's out telling his story that um, the establishment have worked against him uh, because he was getting more recognition doing what he was doing than what some of the charities that get the funding from government to do uh, these investigations into the Scottish Child Abuse Inquiry, etc., um, it's very interesting, Scott. Um, you know, and I, also, I'm not, I know a wee bit, and I've spoken to him briefly, mm-hmm. and I, so I'm not going to say too much. I uh, had one case, and, and generally, the only reason I, I didn't get too involved, I'm not going to time that the, the deserves. You know, somebody's asked me, approached me, hey, could you look at this? And, 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 and I genuinely can't because I'm I'm not going to time to give him, mm-hmm. right? The other thing is, genuinely, if, you, if you'll notice. See, see, when you, you take upon yourself to work on a case like this, it leaves, it leaves, leaves, leaves you drained at the end of it sometimes, right? Two and three years down the line, and, and, it, and it lives with you. Now, I've, done a, I've done two or three big big paedophile cases and child abuse cases and investigated them, and, and I just I, I couldn't bring myself to watch it. See, the other night that I tuned into you, and I seen them, and as I say, we've communicated a couple of times, right? I couldn't watch it again. I, I, I had to turn off because I thought I'll get involved in this, and I just I've no go right in me right now to take that on board. That's that's the truth of the matter. I will, Scott. It's it's harrowing. The, the, I mean, his story is absolutely harrowing. What happened to him? Um, the fact that the 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 abusers, um, it was the clergy, uh, settled up and gave him gave him a, a, a financial payment uh, just. Because they they admit that what happened to him happened, um, it go, and it goes to show that well, wait a minute, you've got people that are doing things for a cause, and as you say, just to come back on to what you're saying about how it leaves you drained, etc. The stuff that I'm looking into, and the stuff that, that that when you're trying to do a wee bit of research into these things, as you say, it has an impact on the person that's well, trying that's trying to uh, either expose this. Because it's 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 serious fucking stuff. Yeah, they, they, they come for you. Listen, how many times have you seen a good person smeared? I'm not going to name him, but I've got somebody in the legal fraternity right now, and he's been speaking about things like this for a long time, right? And he smeared him. Then then a smear. Um, listen, it's an old age tactic, isn't it? Um, you get too close to it, you know, right? And then the next thing you end up in jail for, for the charges that you're accusing other people of doing, and you've never done nothing. To, but but listen, have I been in this game too long to know hey, what was the right word? They smear you. Listen, Mitchell, just Mitchell again. And listen, the same case. People in power. Aye. I'm not very comfortable on some of the things I say, but listen, it's all right. I'm, listen, I'll take, take what's coming of that, right? But um, listen, when I first spoke out, listen, I'm not playing a victim here. I'm not caring anywhere, right? But this gives you a wee example, just, right? 2005, I, t- I think, genuinely think I'm doing what, what a genuinely good deed. Right, a wee girl's dead, and listen, I don't regret that part. Right, and you think you're helping, you know, like you think a guy's maybe involved in a murder, and you take him along, right, and be, say my child abuse, right, you think a child's in risk, and you, and you stand up for that child, right, next thing you're in the matter of your rope titty stuff. Now, when I spoke out in 2005, or 2003, and then in 2005, right, look at what I've done, they just started smearing me. Aye. Oh, no, there's no S's exist, 50,000. Listen, Mark Cain is, the, the, the 50,000 story, Jane Hamilton, they do the record 10 facts, just lies. They told mm-hmm. us in the High Court. Why? How, how, John Beckett, Lord Beckett, Lord John Beckett told lies in the High Court to the Appeal Court. Now, I don't believe that John Beckett would lie to the Appeal Court. People disagree with me on that, right? But I don't think so. He had to get fed that information to feed the court. Now, Mark Cain's statement, 
Uh, and statements he's gave online to some of the forums. I, I genuinely I didn't even know what a forum is. You know, oh, oh, he's on this forum. What's a forum? I, I'm technically challenged. I didn't care about technology. And, uh, but I've heard that, listen, uh, people send me screenshots for forums and whatever. Eh? No money was ever discussed with me, Mark. Eh? It's just a lie, a fictitious lie. 50,000. 50, if you want me the papers, you get 500 quid, maybe. £50,000 a deal. Who, who's going to pay somebody £50,000? They're just lies. And then Mark Cain never wrote essays. Listen, I genuinely no feel sorry for Mark Cain because Mark Cain could have dealt with a different men, so could I have, and whatever, right? And uh, sad, do you know, right? But, um, Jody Jones's death is more important than my feelings or Mark Cain's feelings. Absolutely. Right? And uh, listen, me, me and Mark Kane, listen, I think in 2010, the years, when he was at Stirling, had like wee gangs that you, you know, he's all cool and all that. Listen, we had a, a wee physical thing one time, right? And, uh, and uh, I'm laughing because next again, day, Mark Kane's meant me and Stirling himself and, and sat me down and listen, I've explained it to him and he says, Scott, I can't blame you, but, but you understand my position. I said, of course, listen, no. I said, I, I, wasn't, I didn't dislike this boy. And I told him, Mark, listen to because I dislike you, so there's a wee girl then, do you know what I mean? And and if if you knew everything I knew about Mark Cain, I, I think you'd be a real killer if you hadn't stepped up. I said, I'm not going to bad mouth, I'm going to dead now, but Mark had a real, real, um, real troubled childhood, you know, like heavy, heavy violence to animals, all sorts of things, right? And and, and no me, half a dozen people, oh, cleaners, cooks, pals, yes, it's, it's at university, uh, college, and uh, La- Lassie, Jimmy, you know, oh, listen, there's several people with serious concerns. Where, where's he been? And, right, so then as soon as you walk, you think you're doing what is a good term, a good thing. They just, you're, you're picking up the paper and they're smearing your lies and that. And uh, listen, I sat back for years and, and Ray had to read that on Channel 5. Channel 5 ran that program next again day and uh, running with the same lies. About this essay and just, just and, the, and the missing knife and, and no importance in the condom. That's just police telling their hacks to smear a person who, who's doing de- good. So child abuse is the same. Aye, absolutely. If you, if you start mentioning the Fetty's Gate and, and judges in Edinburgh and the, you know, oh, you're in serious trouble. Aye, well, it's, it's at this point I should probably put a, a disclaimer and say that uh, I don't feel suicidal in any way. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm at the most peace I've ever been, uh, even after doing that, that is, documentary. Ah, yeah. I'm not going to say police still is empty. Listen, understand his predicament. Genuinely, I, I, I would have got me involved with him, but I genuinely got the time. Aye, as it's, I mean, it's a, it's a harrowing case uh, for anybody who's not seen it. It's on my, it's on my Rumble channel. Subscribe to the Rumble channel because some of the platforms won't even let you upload the information because of the themes that you're talking about, and that just goes onto the censorship and the smearing as well. Just to come back on on the smearing, I mean, I, I, I advise somebody in a political party that I wouldn't be bullied, bought, or broken, and they then proceeded to try to bully me, buy me, and break me. Um, it's not going to happen, you know. Like, you, like they try and use what you say won't happen as their their ways to try and like bring you down. But at the end of the day, it's all about justice. Uh, I'm all for justice because there's a lot of injustice in this world. And when I spoke to you, I first spoke to you, Scott. It was before we done even done a podcast. It was just through message you know, on Twitter. You told me about this, and I and you sent me a couple of a couple of uh, breadcrumbs, so to speak. And I just followed those breadcrumbs to to try and find out about the case. And the more I'm finding out about the case and the more information that becomes available, I think it's obvious that to, to anybody that, that's able to think um, and think outside the narrative of the mainstream that you get fed. Because if you believe the mainstream, we're, we're, we're got to be boiling to death soon. That reminds me, I'll need to put the heat in it. Boiling to death, wearing my mask, wearing my mask, it doesn't do any good. Aye. Um, the, yeah. You can't even be genuine. See, when I use the word intelligent, genuinely, I didn't mean it in a, in a, in a put down manner. Mm-hmm. Because intelligence is measured, right? Different ways and all that. And education. You don't have to be educated. But you, anybody with ha, genuinely half a brain, ha, half level of intelligence, read this case. You can't walk away and say, he definitely did it. Mm-hmm. Nothing that tells you he didn't do it. Nothing. 
nothing at all. People, listen, even that QC, a KC, I keep forgetting how Lizzie's did. A KC says to me one time, ah, there was evidence going, but there's grasses and there's not a drop of order, is But isn't it? Circumstantial evidence, and see, over the years, the circumstantial evidence is oh, massive, massive. <coughs> being brought into question. Lord Scott, again, I'm going to go back to that because genuinely, he's right now, he's my legal hero. I think Lord Scott is a brilliant, right? And they go back to murder in a small town, mm-hmm. right? And what he says about the search party statements. So there's a massive part of circumstantial evidence. He knew where he walked to the body. Luke Mitchell didn't walk to the body. Luke Mitchell walked past the V and the dog indicated and all that, right? And it's all in their original statements. I've read them all. Alice Walker didn't say about the dog because Alice Walker was a, a wee bit older and she was a wee bit behind. But Kelly and Janine both says that they seen me or the dog doing that on the wall and acting funny and 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 and, and was, the dog was really excited. So Mitchell, logic tells you if you climb over where you go to where your dog was pinpointing, that's where he found her. And then five, five, six weeks later, and should see the statements are different. It's like when John Scott, um, Lord Scott, I'm going to give him his place. Let's say he was a lawyer in Leith. He learned his trade in Leith. He didn't he, um, go through the advocacy. He was a solicitor advocate. He learned his silks, you no know, like the hardware and all that. John Scott's a very respect, real respectful man, right? Mm-hmm. But if we talk like that with the witnesses, so there's a, a chunk of the circumstantial evidence away. The high court judges tell you they're suspects, right? Sus- that these statements are suspect. They should have been examined further. Then you've got Andrina Bryson. Peter, I think I've told you this before, but I've told a lot of people this. I interviewed Andrina Bryson in 2011, right? Mm-hmm. Solicitor, me and our solicitor turned up at our home. We've been searching for her. Chatting a couple of doors and left messages. And that. We got a phone call in the office. Ah, you've been looking for me, blah, blah, blah. And we go to her home. And then we turn up, she's here with her husband. I think his name's Alan, if I remember right, Alan Owens. Now, at the time in 2003, Alan Owens is uh, very close to the Jones family. He knows them all. They're, they're all pals. Mm-hmm. But, uh, he's got drug problems. Now, the only drug I can think of at the time, I know he was heroin and DFs and that, but do you remember the pop marks on the face and stuff, right? He, he wasn't in a good place in 2003, right? And uh, Andrina Bryson, his wife, allegedly driving along the road. Listen, this road in 2003, they wouldn't bend on it, but anyway, she's done all this fucking 180 degrees and she can identify a couple. As she's driving, she never identified anybody. She's going to court, she can't identify Mitchell. It's, it, doc, doc identification in laws are, are, are very contentious thing, right? Because when you walk into a court of law and, and you see somebody sitting in the dock, you automatically have a presumption that that's the person that done it because the police are putting their right, and so, so there's a presumption. So it's mm-hmm. easier to see that's him. And mm-hmm. he's been challenged many times in court, brother. So on, on Luke's side, it's the complete opposite. She picks him up for a Kodak camera, goes into court 18 months or whatever later. Can you see the man at you? Now, remember, Mitchell had been in the paper nearly every day for 18 months after she identified him for this camera, a eh, Kodak camera snapshot. Remember the ones that slid out the front? Aye. Right. One of them. So she identifies him for this white background. He's got long hair, and they show him a, they show him mug shots of 12 and 13 year olds with Al Keith. Oh, is that him? And then they show him a big picture, right? And she says, That's him. So after she picks Mitchell for her picture, she's got 18 months of reading tabloids. And every morning in the tabloid, Luke Mitchell, Luke Mitchell, Luke Mitchell, every kind of photograph you can think of. Most of them horrible ones with a screwed up face or whatever, right? 18 months you're getting bombarded with pictures of a man that you've ID'd for the murder of Jody Jones. Then you walk in the court and can you see the man you see? No, I can't. Huh? The, the, the case, there's your circumstance. Evidence completely finished. It should have collapsed, right? Because the, 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 the jury believed the media. It doesn't matter what he says in that court, Mitchell was guilty. So mm-hmm. I says to Andrea Bryson, we're sitting in the house, she brings her husband and she brings her mother in law, right? Um, and we asked her very polite. We're sitting in suits, we were having any dress like sorry to me. Sitting in suits and brief faces. And, uh, and, uh, and I ask her one simple question When you get into court and you see Mitchell and you can't identify him, can you tell me why? How did he change his appearance? Or oh, the mother in law, get out, get out. Oh, so, sorry, get out, my house, get out. You're putting words in her mouth. And she says, Look, we only asked her one question, get out. So we just, look, we'll just leave this. We all stood up and walked it. And uh, my, my understanding, again, this is my understanding, allegedly, and all that. Right, Andrina Bryson never seen nothing that day. They, they, they reckon her husband, because he had the serious drug problems and then friends with Joneses, he seen a couple allegedly at, at that path, and he didn't want to come forward and say it was Mitchell because he's 
the close connection is to the family and the problems he has with drunken and he's known to the police and all that stuff, right? So his wife says, I seen it. And then when she gets to court, it's now a different ball game, eh? You know, I all went right. to, to walk around a high court, the biggest um, high profile court case in Scotland, and point the finger at me, boy, and put him in jail, you know? So the circumstantial evidence, right? They never had an alibi. Listen, it, you, you'll never have an alibi, my experience, and I think I'm my experience in education and crime and c criminal justice is pretty, <laughs> pretty good. Eh? You, you, you only have a good alibi is when you've done something wrong. Aye. Now, you, you've went to all these lengths, you've been a, a genius at killing somebody and not leaving a, a forensic trace, but you can't, you can't even do an alibi. When you first read Shane Mitchell, Luke Mitchell's brothers, is that nonchalant? Oh, I think he, was, he might have been in there, he might know about it. Wasn't it like, oh, he was definitely there? And then I go to the yes and no answers. Listen, anybody with education, if I sit you and ask you yes and no answers, I could get it, make, make you tell me that the moon made the cheese. Do you know what I mean? Yes, no. The, would, you, the, you masturbate? Yes. And would you normally masturbate if anybody was in the house? No. So that means he wasn't there. But all he sees was, uh, I, I think, I didn't get if he was there. I think he was there. Do you know, it was that nonchalant when you first read it. Then obviously the paranoia creeps in. When you're getting accused then, and anybody knows this, if, if your man uh, accuses you when you're aware and he did something wrong, you start hiding stuff that might implicate you've done other things wrong. And the Mitchells were uh, acting like uh, they were under suspicion because they were getting treated like guilty people. Mitchell, Luke, Luke's brother leaving for his work one morning and the, the police are dragging him out his car. They, they're in a roadblock and pulling him out his car and screaming at him. Listen, they, they, listen to what the, the other night there about the, a 14-year-old boy who were being interrogated. Luke Mitchell's brother was interrogated. That's the words that they use, the commission years and the high court judges use. Interrogation. They interrogated a 14-year-old boy without a lawyer or without a parent. They interrogated his brother. They dragged him out his car for a in the morning. Treated them like a terrorist. Taking them into a police station. You, you fucking your life for your brother. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Were well, you wanking? I am. Well, your brother was in the news. I ah, didn't think so. So he never had that. So that's the circumstantial evidence. All right. It's, it's, Do you hear me? All right. It's, it's, Again, Scott, look, I'm just going to, I'm going to give you, there's a lot of love coming through the online saying that the, the, the effort that you've put in, um, uh, it's understandable the, how attached you've got to the case <laughs> and why you would be looking, no looking to step back, but why you're taking a step back, people understand it. So uh, there's a lot of love coming in online. If you any want to say before we finish up, because that's two hours just had you on for and I know why to be taking up all your night, mate. So we got to be teaching now. We're in. Now listen, get, get what I really want. Uh -huh. I want people to come forward. Listen, I get plenty of offers all the time. I said, I've spoken to thousands of people. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that. Genuinely, hundreds and oh, thousand people in this case. I travel anywhere in Scotland. People are phoning me for you off places. I'll come and meet you. I'll come and meet you. And they. Uh, Oh, you've oh, you made fortunes and you've had this all this. In this case, you go genuinely, go, I'm not complaining about you. I'm just telling you for the record. Mm -hmm. I'm not complaining. I'm not really caring about money. But you got accused, oh, you made a fortune for your book or you're on a lap. And I, I wouldn't have covered my cups of coffee. Right? And, uh, and and I've had donations. People have been very kind to me and donated to those who listen here. That there's money. That money goes towards coffees and travel, petrol, or, or you go meet somebody and, and, and they work for you for a week, you have to pay them and listen to fortunes. Mm -hmm. I never, I, I never ever took a penny in this case. And, and I'm only saying that just to do that to them, Joe. Right. And uh, there isn't any money here, Peter. So I, I keep getting phoned. What I really want for this case is somebody to come forward and tell the truth. I well, I, I said that. Um, and tell, tell me the truth. Just, to, just to support what you're saying, um, I do this at Disney. At Disney cost me a penny today. The, 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 this as far as putting streams out and things like that. My research, I do all my own time. I always like I go to places where I can at my own cost. I know exactly where you're coming from, Scott. It, it's about trying to get justice, and ultimately, it's for for Jody Jones and the miscarriage. Of, what appears to be a miscarriage of justice against. Some young child who's been in jail when there's been others, uh, other evidence that wasn't circumstantial, that was DNA and other things that, that, that should have been taken into account. Um, so I know exactly where you're coming from when, when you, you're keen to do something. You're in, you, we end up out of pocket trying to get this information out to people. Um, and you've got to take all the shit that comes back. So uh, my, my sympathies with you for that because I know exactly what you mean. 
Peter genuinely there, Paul. Listen, anybody who knows me, money is never my motivation. Ever, ever. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I can't tell you going into great detail what I'm up to now, but I'm in search of three bodies, right? right. And, and, and one's, one's way into the investigation, one's at, at the early stage, and one's just at the beginning stage, but I ah, very right. And uh, it all leads... <laughs> There's no money in finding bodies or finding justice, mate. I read online, you know, oh, listen, you're making fortunes for your book. Have you ever laughed? The first 10 grand is, it has to pay for for a lie detector test, right? And just to give you an example, I went through to Glasgow just a couple of weeks ago, three years for here. All on me, three train journeys, and go through there and I meet three, three, three people, we're all having a meeting, and then everyone's with me because I've arranged it. I'm asking people to come for this. Right, I don't know, I can't go away and fall in a slip and say, there's my expenses, but as I say, listen, my book sales and people have been kind, genuinely, people, some people have sent you 50 quid, some people have sent you, sent you much more, but it's just that, that that's their contribution to try and help. Mm-hmm. That, they're brilliant, right? Some, the, the one makes you cakes. <laughs> you me? It's got coming, I've got news for you, and you, and you won't see them, which is brilliant. And the, the reason I've got you there is to give you a box of cake. I, I, I wouldn't mind the cakes, mate. Cake, I love cake. I, I, don't, I love it. I don't want really to tell you, but did you get me? And, and, and then your toes, not so much your toes, you can deal with them. The other ones, oh, you're earning this and that. You're earning that. Listen. Hey, Porters, listen, I'll pay everyone. I've, I've, I've not got much money anyway, but listen, I would give you a pen and you find. To, to catch the colour of Jody. Absolutely, I'm the, I'm the same myself, mate. It's it's about justice for Jody, um, and to correct what seems to be a, a, an outright miscarriage of justice. Um, the same what I'm seeing in the, the, the Dave Sharp case, and also the other podcasts that I've been highlighting since uh, Chosen come back. So I'm going to say thanks very much, Scott, for joining us this evening, for being so ah, open welcome. and sharing the information the way that you do. Um, and I look forward to, to seeing more for you on what you're doing. Um, I, I like following you on Twitter because you you do have, as you say, a wee outburst every now and again. Your latest one, or the one I seen the day was, uh, I don't know if it was about Pete Wishart and Independence or whether it was, I uh, he'd mentioned Independence again. And you were saying about, oh, there must be there must be an election coming. Um, listen, every one of them, the, listen, I'm a Scottish, listen, you, you know me, and anybody knows me, listen, I'm up against Scottish independence support. Hi, me too, mate. Me too. And uh, listen, I would, I would always vote yes, but listen, I find it de- difficult to watch SNP, MPs or MSPs. Listen, I could count maybe two or three in the whole party. I could look at it and think, you know, and uh, it's real sad what they've done, Peter. Listen, politics, I leave the, the crime aside. What, 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 they, what they, and I say they, Sturgeon and uh, four or five others, what, what they've done is uh, criminal. What they've done to this country is uh, criminal. Absolutely. Uh, they've left us, yeah. they left us in a worse state than what, what they found us eight years ago. Um, and when I'm saying when they found us, for when Sturgeon took, took uh, the leadership, the first British Scottish nationalist uh, MSP of FM, by our own admission, um, and I wish her good luck in her upcoming uh, issues that she's going to be facing. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, listen, that's, I'm being I, 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 I spend all my life trying to keep people out of jail, right? It's, it's your nature, eh? If you've ever been in there and and, and, and understand the plight of others, eh? maybe that's a wee Mary, I think, for Mitchell. And uh, Because I've been in there. I, I, I know it, but imagine being in there accused of a, a heinous crime that you never committed. Jesus... Listen, it's mind-boggling. Uh, how, how that boy has survived is a... Oh, I t- listen, a guilty man couldn't have survived how he survived, Pete. That's my opinion. See, if he had been guilty and they trying to keep up all this pretense all this time, it wouldn't have washed in his you. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's people... Listen, me, Joe Steele and all that spoke out to other people, right? And then people say, how does Joe Steele come in? Did he become an academic? Well, he's... He's an expert witness in prisons and miscarriages of justice, eh? And the people who are, are accusing him maybe got... A, I better watch what I see this. Maybe they've got a degree in some kind of whatever, eh? And they're, and they're laughing at Joe Steele. They're giving a laugh 17 years in the jail. The man knows it. Listen, a, a podcast, I don't like sharing podcasts, but the lad is Sean Toll. I was his lawyer. And just listen, just briefly, Sean Toll served time for um, a murder he'd done to commit. There's big legal arguments for other things for another day. But, um, the, the boy that died they, they, they stabbed with a knife and it couldn't have been they, they, they dismissed the murder weapon in, in, in court for the measurements when I was his lawyer I, I was in I was in a, a superstore in Glasgow and all that Fraser's or someone looking for the exact kitchen knife 
Exact. I found them. And I've got a shop assistant hunting the knife. I'm going to put really in. Do you know all that? And we proved it. That this lad, Sean Dog was telling you, right, 13 years in jail for, and, and, and the, the court case dismissed the murder weapon anyway. So we, we spoke to him. And, and the way I speak to him and other people like him, people who have been in jail and understand jail, understand the justice system, they all support Mitchell. Aye. And it's like... You know, you know listen, 2003, everybody hated them. He's, a, he's an animal and a beast. And I used to say, no, nah, listen, I've had waxy arguments over the years, right? And uh, <laughs> but 2008, the last time I really looked at and done research, I took a man, I'm not going to name him, but he's a, a heavy criminal. Shall we want to call it? Hey, but they're into dogs and lurchers and you know, all that badger baiting and all that cruel fucking shit. Right. And they took him and others, gamekeepers and the uh, dog men, men genuinely into dogs, you know, like so is Joe Jones, Joe the Ignore and all that. They never looked at this. Listen, there's a here's a well for you, Peter. Just a quick one, mate. A senior copper one day sitting in conversation. He obviously never read my book, but he says to me. Do you know, Scott, I looked at the injuries and he says, you know what went through my mind? I said, what's that? He says, they're quite similar to Jack the Ripper. Oh, this is a senior police officer telling me. I said, I wrote about that in my book, did you? I said, yeah, I looked at the Elizabeth Short and the injuries are very similar. So if you're going to look at the culture, mm -hmm. golf culture, you know, Marla Manson kills, go and look into that because Dal Keith is Rose and Chapel, no, it's heavy into Freemasonry stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So you better go start looking into Jack the Ripper enthusiasts, right? And he says, you know, that's one of the first notes I took when I read this case, and I'm thinking, I can't first tell you this, right? But they looked into golf and scooter boy, but the culture up the road between these boys is torturing animals. Now, listen, I, I tell people in my book, I'll just give you an idea. I'm not saying everybody's like this, by the way, because I grew up there and I know, listen, I've been out hunting lamping, fucking for foxes and deer and rabbits and all sorts, right? Up the road when they're looking at Mitchell for being a scooter boy, 50 yards, 100 yards up the road, you've got Joseph Jones and that torturing animals, decapitating them. Listen, here, here's one of them. They shoot the deer in the hind leg, right? So it, it can't run so fast and they put their bull lurchers on it. So the dogs ain't going to tear the dog away. This is a whole culture. <laughs> uh, Dick, Dickie's father is a, is a, is a gamekeeper compulsory. He takes all the police up the lamb and you're all shooting. And, the, and he's at a murder scene at the time of the girl would be murdered. The police are asking him about sexual orientation or the sexual advances towards Jody. And the police take him back to a murder scene. So actually, do you remember the mate copper that got done for the rape? What's his name? Oh. oh. I mentioned in my book. He does the same. He goes back to the murder scene with his daughter so that if his DNA is ever found, where she he deposed, deposed the, the body, he can always say, oh, I was here uh, a couple of days later with my daughter. So, so we've now got a man in the police taking him to a murder scene when he should, he's getting asked in his house. Oh, what were you and your sexual advances towards Jody? And he, and he follows you with the murder detectives and throws them out their house. Anybody's ever been involved in a murder inquiry? You didn't put murder squad detectives out your house. They're, they're no going. So what kind of man's got the authority to do that? And what kind of man's got a relationship with police that'll take you a murder scene that your son was there at the time of the murder? Just the, none, of, none of it, Peter, is a... Uh, listen, if you go on and on and on and listen, I could write right. a book since my last weekend. And, uh, listen, what, what needs, listen, in law, I'm, 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 I'm more than sure of this. I'm sure that this will go back into an appeal court on just this disclosure grounds alone, right? I think there's other, other issues, and then if we can get the, get, get the swabs done, oh, listen, oh, be brilliant, brilliant. And uh, that, to me, that's going to solve the murder. I, th I think that will tell you who the murderer is, or certainly it's going to give the murderer a lot of questions to ask why you're seeming on a 14-year-old girl, you know, right? And then... Uh, but really what I want is a mere then and somebody to come forward and say to me, Scott, this year or this and tell me what happened. I think I know what happened. And that's only based, listen, it's only based on my own research and my own investigation, talking to people out there. Remember, I can go there and have a pint. See, see when you went out in 2005 and 2006, people, ah, he's a fucking animal and a beast. And they know now, genuinely know now. I've been to a, a couple of real big funerals. Mm -hmm. Dal Keith funerals, right? In the last couple of years, you know, like real big, big turnout funerals. Men, really respected men, and mm -hmm. maybe a thousand men for the area there, Joe. And they, listen, I'm, I'm, I didn't blow smoke on me in Arsenal, I didn't take pride much and all that. But a lot of old men I know come over giving you a part in the back. Well done, Scottish son. At least somebody spoke up. And and gen, generally speaking, the, the, the vast majority of people now know Luke Mitchell, didn't they kill Jody Jones? 
listen, there's there's legal arguments and how he's going to go out and he's a shite lawyer and he was never a lawyer and he's a bank robber and, and uh, this one's had this and they're, and they're having an affair with everybody. And I'm just all the shite, right? I mean, but the uh, vast majority of people is uh, all, all know now that Luke Mitchell didn't kill that wee girl. Right. And, uh, well, I, I so, think what we'll do, Scott, is because we're our two hours now, mate, and I'm not going to keep you much longer because we've covered an awful lot. Really close, really I, I just want to say to you, uh, thanks very much for, for agreeing to come you're on. Welcome. And I'll be keeping an eye out for what you're doing in, in the future, and I'll be chasing anything that I can on this. And if there's anything that I find, I'll, I'll make sure that I make you, I make you aware of it and see if you already know about it. Um, I love it. Listen, people get, tell me all the time. Be honest, be a for, be, my, my lines are open to anybody that's got in, and I, I won't investigate in it. And if there's ever yeah. anything you want to get out, um, you've got a platform Please, here. Nah, nah, um, appreciate you've got a platform here to be used at any time, mate. Because I, I, nah, I genuinely do appreciate it. Just out of the goodness to try to get information out to people. Because I know what censorship's like. I'm heavily censored on, on the, the, the platforms that I use, so make sure you're subscribing to all the channels. Um, so if you've got Forbes, for Cinnamon Bridges, chosen by Cinnamon Bridges, on air for Scotland, sponsored by Tweet Street Scotland Occupied, home of the satirical saltire. We're going to say yeah. good night from there, and thanks for Good night, good night for me, good night for you. Good. Cheers, pal. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Pierre. Ciao, son.